No further guests for this stream. Um, yeah, we have uh, Evie Lupine and uh, Amp Pup. Um, do you two want to introduce yourselves? Yeah. Evie, uh, by all means. Yes, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Evie Lupine. I'm also attempting to stream this on my YouTube. So if you're from my YouTube, you probably know who I am. But if you're not, hi, uh, I am a BDSM educator. I have been in the community for six and a half going on seven years i've been a youtuber for about five years and i am asexual i am polyamorous i'm in a bdsm relationship i have lots of opinions about lots of things that are are being said but of course my primary thing is hopefully to teach everyone and also kind of critique maybe what's been going on on twitter the last couple of days oh and also sorry your pronouns oh uh she her or they uh, and I'm Amp. I go by Amp or Pup Amp. Um, I am also a YouTuber of about six years, I think now. Our anniversary is actually tomorrow. I should uh, seven years. Um, I teach a lot of sex education, similar to Evie, um, and do Twitch, Twitter. I kind of come from it as a 24/7 lifestyler. I have a partner who is my daddy. I am a, a pup and a sub in many ways. Um, and a full-time content creator that likes to have discussions that are based on actual facts and, um, you know, listening and not, not getting too heated. So I'm really looking forward to this discussion because uh, I've made lots of posts and whatnot on Twitter that has gotten a lot of hate and aggression and, and anger in my DMs and, and ats. And I don't, I, I'm, I'm all here for opinions, but let's have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thanks for having us here today. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, uh, sorry, I've got, I, I, this is a, we, we normally only have like one person on, so I've got a <laughs> stuff's not formed <laughs> exactly how I normally do it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I guess we can like maybe, uh, get into this a little bit. I, um, uh, I'm not exactly sure how this all started, uh, how like this like sort of controversy started. I, it, I, it seems like this was a, um, um, a tweet from um, uh, Shoe on Head. Is that is that more or less how this all? I kind of just woke I mean, up and was like, "Oh, everything's on fire." So... People have been talking about this in previous like years, right? Mm -hmm. Like this isn't like a brand new like argument, but this yeah. particular one. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, from people I know in the kink community that have been around longer than I have, like, they say this variation of this debate has happened for, like, 20 plus years. Like, there has always been discourse about it. I think in recent times, I remember it being a thing on Tumblr. The last few years I remember it, it's been kink at pride, but it's been, does being a straight person that does kink allow you to go to pride? That's been the discourse that I remember. Oh, yeah. It's never been think of the children flavor stuff until this year when we get this new variation on it, at least from what I remember from the last few years. True. Mm -hmm. Right. Wasn't there like a whole thing is like LGBTQK or whatever, like add <laughs> kink into the acronym or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and similar to the, the straight kinksters shouldn't be a pride discussion. It's like, a, you don't know someone's background in history, if they're bi, if they're pan, like those people are queer and they are a part of that community, even if they do seem straight presenting. And then at the same time, we have these fallacies of like, think of the children, which are based in a lot of emotion and strawman arguments. Um, and it's only been since Twitter and other social medias have become more prevalent, popular, um, and gay people get more rights. And we start talking about these ethics more and more that the discussion has really blown up in the last three four years probably or so online the discussion's mm -hmm. always been there but it never started blowing up and, and trending for instance like it did this last week on this specific topic yeah and it's right. i mean yeah i i would just want to emphasize oh, like i i think within the kink community that's a problem we do have is like buy and pan erasure like because we in my community we do have events for people that are bi and pan and gay and everything else and if you go and people perceive you as being too straight like you can be ostracized even if you are actually bi and pan and i think that does sometimes also translate into discourse like this as well 
For sure. Um, I mean, like, one thing that, like, I, I would really love to, like, uh, we were talking about this just before the stream started, but, like, um, I was talking to my roommate about this, uh, who's a trans woman, and she was telling me about how um, much of a connection that the uh, kink and the queer communities have, which I wasn't really aware of. Mm -hmm. And, like, I mean, uh, we, we've, like, talked about this, I guess, a little bit on uh, Twitter, Evie, but, like, just the way that, like, so many of the... Um, uh, like, uh, people involved in, like, the, like, sort of, like, kink, uh, people, like, marching in pride, or, like, mm -hmm. leather people, like, marching in pride, have been instrumental in, like, fighting for, uh, queer liberation, like, uh, gay rights, and all these types of things, and, yeah, I was just wondering if I could, yeah, if you two would want to talk about, about that. Mm -hmm. I think talking about the history and, and what pride is, how it started, is kind of important to the conversation, for yeah. sure. Um, if, if you don't mind me just starting there with like the Stonewall Perfect. riots Perfect. and Ooh. the fact that Stonewall riots started because we were being sexually repressed, we were pretty much illegal, um, and we had to hide in bars and socialize in that regard. Uh, and so when enough was enough, the, the trans women of color and the drag queens and the L, the G, the B, the T, the everyone that was there in the bars started pushing back and fighting. And while nobody died there, there is such a long history of, of this oppression that is put on and projected on our communities because we are just trying to exist and love who we want to love and, you know, have space to be ourselves. Now, where, where we get a lot of that overlap is that, like, the work of liberation is and always has been no pride for some without all of us being liberated. And that's that's a very paraphrased Marsha P. Johnson quote, which again, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera are two trans women who are um, not the first ones that threw the brick, but they are given credit by many people. And that debate of who threw the first brick at Stonewall is always one of those points that no one can agree on, and that's fine. The point being, they were there and helped lead that fight. And they were loud and they were proud, regardless of being attacked verbally and, and sometimes physically. Um, that all being said, that overlap with the BDSM and kink community is because we share that same struggle. Both the LGBTQIA plus community and kinky folks have always been fighting for just having a space to exist, especially in recent years where censorship on sex especially has been so prevalent, has been so heavy, and has been using that same fear mongering rhetoric that we see for people that don't want gays to have rights or for just gays to exist and be a pride. Mm -hmm. Can I uh, ask Amp? Um, <clears throat> I, I, uh, I heard on, on Twitter, I don't know if this is true, but from what I understand, like the, uh, the leather daddies, I guess they're, they're called like, uh, the part of the gay community that, uh, back during like Stonewall time was like, I guess, wearing, uh, leather, they were also involved at the Stonewall riots. Is that, uh, the case? Yeah. Leather has always been there since the beginning and beyond just pictures that show people in parades back in the seventies and eighties, um, leather was always a part of our community and especially biker clubs, biker gangs, those, those clubs and those, those bars that were essentially leather bars because of the motorcycle clubs were also fronts for gay and queer people to socialize and be with each other. And that's not just gay men, that is also the gay women and the dykes on bikes and that part of the community that not only were there and present, but helped us through things like the AIDS epidemic, which is a whole other conversation I'm sure we'll open up on tonight. But the point being, they've been there since the beginning and it wasn't just the leather daddies and it wasn't just the trans women of color, it was, we were all there. This, this is back when men had to dress as women, whether it was intentional drag or not, just to socialize with other men and be in a bar together, you know, holding hands or having a drink or being, you know, very forward. So that's kind of where that overlap and that, that representation does exist. Um, but I don't want to talk fully. I would love if E.B. Yeah. Also. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get there. Well, I think it like it almost even goes back farther than the Stonewall riots. Because when we think about the way that gay culture and leather culture, which is the segment of the BDSM community that Pub Amp and kind of we're all referring to right now. Like, if you've taken any BDSM history classes, you've probably heard the spiel about... Um, you know, men that were either dishonorably discharged during World War II or were coming back home from World War II. They were left at their last port of call, so San Francisco, New York, etc. Um, and they couldn't go back home because they were, you know, found out to be gay. And so they couldn't go back home to Oklahoma. They stayed where they ended up getting left by the military. 
And that's oh, where really? we both see the rise of gay leather and also like gay culture in a more general sense. And we that's why we have the leathers, right? It's, you know, they were left with their military bomber jackets, their military boots, surplus motorcycles, other forms of surplus military gear. We get things like Tom of Finland, for example, that sort of, or, or Marlon Brando that end up being these big icons for the BDSM community and the gay community. And so from the start, they are very, 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 very intertwined. And then that only ends up going farther. That's also true with leather dykes or women that are also in the leather community. And uh, so it's interesting to me that there, I don't know if you were learning about gay culture in the United States, if you weren't kinky, I don't know if that part of the conversation is cut off. Because it seems like mm-hmm. what's happening is maybe if you're a gay youth and you're trying to learn about where did we come from, what happened, the AIDS crisis, it seems like so many of these little instances that connect kink and, and BDSM and gay culture together in certain places are just like not talked about and from what I know I've I've gone to so many BDSM conventions and talked to people that survived the AIDS crisis talked to people that were there in the 60s and 70s at the very beginning and they have stories of vanilla gay men and women literally cutting their photos out of events like they did not want to be associated with like the non vanilla gays because they were afraid if they see that our sexuality is this way we will never be accepted and so it's better to destroy the memory of these things than pretend like they actually exist and acknowledge them and then stonewall happened and we had the aids crisis and we saw how that actually ended up falling out interesting so i guess like the the birth of like leather being like a because now everybody thinks leather is like the sexiest thing ever but it started out as like not necessarily like a sexual thing i guess right is that uh fair to say in like the Mm. early days in san francisco um i've also heard it was like a way for gay men to uh sort of take back their masculinity and not be like a the stereotypical feminine uh like gay man well it's kind of what Edie had, had touched on is like protocol in the kink community and the leather community came from people that were coming from the military and they were getting discharged and so we got a lot of uh you know sirs in their sir caps and like this this protocol of like sir and boy and and the way in which we teach each other that was how we passed down knowledge is was through whether it was sexual or not these com- connections and these these camaraderie and these groups that were existing and, and sharing their experience together. And I, I I would think that it's just a disservice to not, not only not talk about it because we already don't do that and we already demonize anyone that tries to when you look at something like YouTube where myself and Evie have both done histories on things mm-hmm. and I'm sure he can <laughs> attest to the fact that it gets restricted, it gets blocked because it's gay history. Mm-hmm. And that's so frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just wanted to add that in there. Like that that's why it's yeah. important to talk about this because if we don't stand up for it, then we we do get that that the social media aspect of like the people that are heard the loudest are therefore right, which is not how logic goes. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I I guess like um one one thing I'd kind of like to I, I I was hoping to sort of go through a few of the like um worst takes without like n- naming too many names without when we don't have to but um yeah. like you know we we certainly can that's not off limits but like you know um just sort of going through some of the um uh like i think one of the one of the arguments that i i saw a lot of was just sort of the um um i guess like the optics angle which mm-hmm. you sort of touched on which um i i, I thought was like um yeah, uh, they, I mean, you know, you know, not to don't want to like get out of lane too much. Like we, we uh, James and I are both, you know, um, cis het dudes, but at the same time, like, um, uh, yeah, like it, it seemed like there was this like very bad argument of like pride needs to be sanitized in order to be accepted and by like you know remove all of the um, anything that could be considered deviant or scary or like i've seen a lot of people even saying like this is just playing into conservatives hands and like oh like like which i mean since when has 
trying to appease conservatives on anything worked yeah. in any issue. <laughs> yeah, like mean, conservatives aren't going to change their minds on like gay people just because stop being kinky. We're like, you know what? Yeah. Joe Biden is being not wearing. Cops. Yeah. It does not matter. <laughs> yeah. People <laughs> don't care. Hmm. Yeah. Now that you guys don't wear leather anymore, you're all right. That all was right. the line that we drew. Yeah. I I think <laughs> it, it goes back to how we how we define like the purpose of pride. And I, I've seen from a couple of people where like after day three of discourse, it kind of came out of like, this is what I think pride is. And I was like, oh, this is like where we're having the disconnect is some people think that pride, like a as a whole concept, the primary focus should be a queer friendly block party, primarily for children with rainbow flags. And right, other right. people yeah. are using it more as a memory of the Stonewall riots. I still consider it to be a form of, uh, I don't know, political movement, maybe not an active riot, but a form of, uh, I'm my, my language is failing me, some kind of basically way of saying like, fuck you, we're here, we're queer, we're going to be the way that, the, that we are, whether or not you as a society say it's acceptable right now or not. And so it depends on kind of how you want pride to be. And I think on what your goals are, you're going to have a very different reaction to kink at pride and the optics of it because if your optics of it are i wanted to be a family friendly block party seeing a person in leather that maybe looks kind of sexual to you that is going to be bad optics but if you're if your purpose is coming from a totally different perspective then that's going to be a different question agreed <laughs> to add to that uh it's sexual liberation that is how pride started that is the point of pride that is that is the spirit of pride is sexual liberation the people that act like sex is not a part of pride um i i, I would ask why and i would ask them that history because sex was literally part of the first pride flag one of the colors in that flag represented sex and while it was removed because of manufacturing reasons it still is the original pride flag um and so to that, like all of these discussions or debates that, that I saw and have watched, the, 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 the starting point was always, what is kink? Mm. And then the answer is always very misconstrued and or taken from a dictionary in such a way that you could, you could argue that Merriam-Webster has the best definition, but also you're not taking context into consideration. Um, kink literally being defined mm. as anything that's not vanilla normal kind of sex would then entail that all of pride is kinky. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that based on a very, 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 very literal definition, all of pride is doing something that is not societally friendly or is normal or is straight on vanilla interactions. So you kind of have to have that nuance there of a definition in a dictionary doesn't also evolve with society yeah. we we have to uh give space for gay icon merriam webster and uh <laughs> his uh opinions on the matter here yeah so I, I got a quick question in my chat that's sort of relevant to this point so i'll speak to it really quickly uh as far as the the pink the sex part being in the original rainbow pride flag, i was wondering what color that was. um somebody said wouldn't that remove asexual people i'm asexual i would say that the rainbow pride flag is not like that was created before the concept of like asexuality is like a concrete thing existed. I'm not offended by pink being included in the rainbow pride flag because I, the way that I think about it is like zero is also a number not having sex, not experiencing sexual attraction is still a relationship to sex. So <laughs> that's non normative for people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I, I don't think there's any conflict with having pink in there, but of course different asexual people probably feel different ways about pink being present or not but i think it's important to understand the intention of like why was that included in the original pride flag and like how does that relate to gay liberation and and sort of the the way that gay people or queer people see themselves agree totally um and i just want to make it clear as well like i'm demisexual which is on the the asexual spectrum i i have sexual like like energies towards people sometimes but a lot of the time if i'm going out in leather I'm, I'm not having sex i'm just wearing it to be myself and represent who i am as a gay kinky queer guy mm -hmm. absolutely um yeah awesome uh i think this is like a really important um backstory uh should we start diving into the the bad takes sam 
looking at the TV. I suppose. Yeah, I think if we could start with a take yeah. that's like defining what kink is on behalf of kinky people, I think that's like the one other solid thing I would want to make sure to have clear up front for either current or future oh, yeah. viewers. Because I think a solid 70% of this discourse is based on people talking past each other and assuming what kink means. And okay, if we great. could do yeah. that, that would answer a lot of questions. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I can start walking back. Oh. Oh, am I? Are, are we? Are yeah, we I okay? think you're, I you're back. We're, we're good. We're good. I'm monitoring on like three okay. different things right um, now. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> my, um, yeah, my mic is uh, not good uh, all the time. Uh, turns it, Blue snowballs don't, don't, don't get the cheapest um, uh, mic ever and then use it from when you start your YouTube to present day. It's bad. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, sorry. We got, sorry, I, I, I lost my uh, my place here. I'm trying to... trying I'm to. Not, do you have that some, uh, the, that uh, thing that um, Evie is talking about? I'm, I'm not sure if I have, I have yeah, seen Yeah, I, I mean, are we... Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure which uh, which thing exactly you're. Um, um, uh, if there's like a specific person you're there's... referring to or a specific page you wanna. I mean, it's something I just in general in the discourse. I saw I don't know forty people yeah. say kink is inherently sexual, and I'm like, have you ever even done kink before? Like, who are you to have this opinion about this thing? And then, mm -hmm. um, are, are you okay if I name drop somebody slash a previous? Oh, debate? go ahead. I, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get featured on all sorts of YouTube channels now. Um, Burn some bridges. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's do well, it. This account there weren't any bridges there to begin with. Anyways, um, the person <laughs> I'm thinking of in particular is uh, last last night. I believe there was a debate, which I actually was intending to be a part of, but it got rescheduled so many times I I couldn't be a part of it. And it was basically a pro kink at pride neutral to kink at pride anti kink at pride debate of like nine people and one person there is uh oh, riley yeah. and riley essentially um, said just oh. yeah uh at riley essentially uh, said gonna, that oh, go ahead. every every uh reputable definition that she could find of kink um basically inherently linked it to like a sexual act and then pe two different people over the course of that live stream attempted to self-defined based on what the community says kink means and then they didn't accept that and it seems like that sort of mentality of like you can't define yourself i think it's inherently sexual the dictionary defines it this way ipso facto that is the only acceptable definition of kink and like that's kind of frustrating because i don't think for example trans people would really want the dictionary to be the or or medical literature to be the end all be all of what it means to be trans because that definition is evolving way quicker than dictionaries can be updated and people are learning so much more about themselves outside of what Mir miriam webster says their reality is also like is that it, it, your, your identity isn't like a fucking like a 10th grade book report <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> webster's dictionary defines kink as like <laughs> going the laziest way to start off any presentation. <laughs> mm -hmm. James and I were also asked to be in on that debate, and we're kind of like, um, if like you know, uh, two uh, straight guys who aren't involved in kink are being asked to be representatives of like kink on this debate, that's not a good debate. <laughs> oh, I don't know how the actual demographics ended up shaking out, but it was definitely like all guys mix of guys and girls on neutral and then all women presumably were female presenting at least at, on on the bottom of the grid and it was like this is a very interesting mixture of, oh, of interesting. perspectives and i don't i don't know I, there were like a bunch of people there i don't know i don't want to assume anybody's gender identity but the presentation mm -hmm. was very like masculine mix of both and and feminine which was i don't I, and so which which end of the debate were the masculine um people? pro and then uh all the oh. female presenting mm. people were on the anti side which i don't know what that says about anything i just oh. thought that was that was an interesting tidbit because oh. if i was there then the demographics would have changed a little bit at least um because i think that oh, yes. that changed the the tone of the debate i think to have the um the gender skewed in that maybe particular fashion Dang. it was a very long debate so i'm i'm outing myself as 
very much checking out of some of the takes. Um, how many of those people were kinky or identified as kinky people? Um, Do we know that? I The one person I talked to prior to the debate said that they weren't kinky, but they were poly. And that's very kink adjacent. I think the implication was that they had men and more than people in their life that were kinky. And watching the debate, there were two people at least that argued about kink in a way that made it sound like they were at least kink informed even if not necessarily kinky themselves there was two people that i saw in that debate that followed me and i think one of them is kinky but i don't think anybody said anything about like i as a kinkster necessarily during the debate i I've, i'm like two hours into it it's four and a half hours long i have not heard anybody make any personal statements about their own involvement in bdsm as a culture Okay, mm -hmm. because, and I asked that question because I think that that does lead us to define things a certain way based on emotional takes, uh, fallacies, mm -hmm. and straw men. And a lot of the, the early on, the, the foundations that they were setting was based on emotional takes or, or assumptions that you are projecting on a community that you possibly might not be a part of. And that's where I kind of get a weird feeling of like, that's not a debate when you're using emotion as fact. Um, that's not a debate when you are projecting. That's not a debate when you are using straw man arguments based on your own personal feelings of being uncomfortable about something. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, yeah. like, it kept going back around to kink is gimp suits with erections, which I just, what? I have I have my own, yeah, the, it, that was always a topic of, of uh, contention and focus in at least the debate that I was watching, um, was that gimp, gimp suits should not be in front of children because erections and having sex. And... The, the 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 when you base when you start and form and have a foundation for a debate that is based off of definitions that you cannot provide personal experiences that are based in also fact and not just emotion, that concerns me a lot. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, this was a big problem I had with is like I I don't think I've seen anyone provide any factual concrete examples really of instances in which this is a problem it's like you know it's the whole twitter thing of inventing someone to be mad about and then ranting about how mad you are at them i mean like it, it seems like there weren't any like the, the only the only thing i saw of like a like a concrete example was um that like a, a little kid with like the uh people like within like the like doing like puppy play mm -hmm. which was not even at a pride event and it was at an event that like was actually supposed like a like uh, a there's a age restriction there and that kid was not supposed to be there um but um yeah like it it, it seems like you know if there are like um I, i'm sure if like someone's like really like looking or really concerned about this they could comb through enough instances to find some case where like something was like not the best at like a prior event but that was not like, but that's like an individual instance of like those specific organizers, that specific context, you could deal with that. But yeah, it it, it didn't seem like there was any um, even attempt to try to connect this to real issues. Rather, it was just this like totally abstract, made up nightmare scenario that I don't see having any basis in reality. Mm. Could you maybe bring up the photo that like people that kind of oh yeah this yeah, yeah 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 sure. while you're while you're pulling it up i'll just for people that are listening to this because i'm sure people on my channel maybe don't even know what the hell's going on here so there's a photo right. that involves i think three uh amab puppy players interacting with a girl um there has been a lot of contention about where this came from some people are saying it's from montreal pride 2019 other people are saying that it's from Folsom. Now I've been to Folsom a bunch. If when the picture gets pulled up, I this will make more sense. But it is Folsom is like a block party. It's not a it's not a parade. You don't typically have people. At least not all of it's a parade. And it's it, it would be unusual to have a bunch of people waiting in a line somewhere, for like as though something's about to go by. So based on the background of the photo and that many just plain clothes people hanging out in the background with flags. It's probably not from Folsom. I know there was a lot of concern about this particular photo being like a psy op from 4chan. This thing, there's this thing called oh yeah, I heard that um, yeah. from from this Operation Pride Fall, which is 4chan essentially or, or someplace like that, trying to uh, basically get normies normies riled up about the deviancy of the homosexuals and like using this as an example. I don't think that photo is originally from there. I think they found it on Google search and was like, make this thing go viral. 
Um, but oh, they didn't have the outrage response. Yeah. <clears throat> no. So yeah, it doesn't really. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that if that was at Pride or anything, but like. I feel like there's a very reactionary impulse that a lot of people had when they saw that photo with things that they have in their head about kink and leather and, you know, puppy play that uh, they assume that like, I mean, I don't want to, you know, straw man anybody here, but like there isn't like a little girl seeing a, a adult man in a leather dog suit, in my opinion, it's not going to like, you know, traumatize this girl. This is not like no. child abuse. I I wouldn't say. Mm, the... uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm. You go. No, okay, I was gonna say that my favorite tweet I saw about this photo was somebody comparing it to a picture of a little girl with Trump. And being like, look, because it was a picture of a little girl with Trump and she was like, ob she looked objectively terrified to be next to him. And meanwhile, <laughs> this picture, that this girl looks happy, like and she doesn't look like she's trying to cringe away or that she's being forced to pose by her parents. Or, you know, whether or not that's that's like good to do or not, like she doesn't seem scared by it. But what I find interesting is the way that this photo is later described in isolation by people that were trying to start debates about this, which is men in public that have straining erections against their cod pieces shouldn't be allowed around children. If you're going to wear your dog gimp suit in front of children, this is inherently evil and like it makes you a pedophile. And it's like, do, first of all, do people know what gimp suits are? Because I heard the word gimp suit a lot this weekend. I don't think I ever actually saw one. <laughs> um and, yeah. and 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 also a harness is like the one that this guy is is wearing that's like the most forward one in the in the uh blue hood in the photo the harnesses like that are considered so mainstream at pride that snl did a skit <laughs> last week that had people wearing harnesses like that in their skit oh, um, oh better than that there was a spongebob episode with a guy yeah. in a leather harness yeah <laughs> or all of yeah. mad max and stuff like that so it yeah so, yeah <laughs> I just I find it I like the part of what I find interesting is like outside of looking at this photo, the way that this photo was later described by people that were trying to make an argument and like inserting sexuality and intention and predatory behavior in a way that isn't evident from the photo itself. And to that, I, I mean, my reaction to anyone that has an opinion on something is generally going to be like, why? Um, yeah. which th we didn't really go into. We just went into, they're, they're going to have an erection, they're wearing leather, they want to be sexual and do sex in public in front of people. And I just, my, re my reaction's always like, why? Why are we over-sexualizing someone standing in leather? Why are kinks bad at Pride? Why is Pride a family-friendly family event in your opinion? Mm -hmm. um, and what is the context? Which is not a why, but like, it's a very basic way to approach a topic, which is not how it, that topic was approached. It was approached with reactionary assumptions, emotionally based arguments again. I feel like I'm going to circle about that, but like the question should be why? Why is this bad? Yeah, no, exactly. I think it's like, I don't know. There's some sort of like, I, I think um, it's like magical thinking. It's kind of like a reactionary, mm. like because it, like in another context, someone might get sexual gratification from wearing this costume or interacting with somebody wearing this costume in this context some of that like sexual nature will be like transferred onto this child and i don't see how that is you know uh, i don't know rational i guess to use like debate language i also just want to say like as someone who's marched in i don't know how many prides as part of the leather contingent the the first thing that I'm not trying to do is have sex in the beating sun while I'm wearing full leather <laughs> or a full gym suit, which I've never done. But I, it's June. I, I it, it is hot. It's hot as hell, and like I, I'm barely able to like wave and hold a flag or like sit on a freaking float. I am not yeah. there having sex. Um, <laughs> But like, also, if someone's there in a gym suit, they're dying. They're not trying to. Ha they, they're they're not oh, gonna have yeah. an erection. I'll tell you that much. There's so much blood okay. in their head. But it's just like mm. that that assumption again is just yeah. so wrong and based in a person's projection. If those people had ever been part of the leather contingent and marched at Pride and kind of got into the community, I would love to know their perspectives. Mm. But all of these people that have opinions are not part of Pride campaigns, are not part of Pride committees, have probably never been to a Pride committee themselves because I've been to those and they are, they love the leather contingents, but also if you came to a 
or a pride committee with those perspectives, you'd probably walk away with a lot of people trying to actually educate you and tell you why these are important and tell you about the history of pride, which was not present in any of these discussions or hot takes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course they haven't gone to uh, many prides because that would involve uh, uh, logging off and going outside. <laughs> I know it's funny. Um, so it's funny how many times I heard people say the phrase touch grass during this whole debacle. Um, I've heard that in, in fleeting before, but never with such gusto. And it's funny because it was like almost everyone that said like, obviously kink is sexual. If you think it's not, you need to go out and touch grass. Only a delusional lefty would think that kink could ever not be sexual. And it's like, I'm sorry, are you, have you done kink before? Do you know ace people that do kink? I'm Because the argument that ended up happening, I heard multiple times is... is is in order because people didn't want to move from their original like emotional gut reaction is they maintain that kink was sexual and so if you aren't engaging in kink while asexual the things you're doing can't be kink which is just like <sighs> again why can't we let people in these communities to find their own terms it 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 mm -hmm. just is very confusing to me what people what gymnastics will happen so that way people can maintain their original perspective without having to move any ground whatsoever and to that point, a lot of conflation uh, of terms, mm -hmm. a lot of the use of kink and BDSM and fetish all as the same word or the same definition as different words. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the chat, I'm seeing like latex is a fet like you're, it's clearly fetish gear. It is a fetish object. Um, as someone who was also a judge on the international Mr. Rubber panel, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very big rubber event wow. with lots of kink suits. A lot of people are there not having sex and just like to wear le like leather and rubber. Mm. The fact that the same way that K-pop stars, I'm seeing a lot of that as well, wear harnesses nowadays because they want to feel sexy. I don't think they're doing the kink. I think they literally are wearing it as a piece of gear that makes them feel empowered or sexy or cool. Mm -hmm. And the same way that that is possible in the K-pop world, it's also possible in the leather world. People are wearing gear to have fun and look cool. Yeah. I've got gear that I'm going to wear when I'm having sex and it is revealing and I'm keeping that in my bedroom because I'm not trying to do it in public. And then I've got gear like my hood up here that I only wear when I like want to be fancy. You can't really see it, but like it's not sex gear. It's just cool, fun. It looks like superhero action helmet gear. Like I'm not That's wearing cosplay. It's like cosplay. Not, not, not everybody who does cosplay fucks in those suits. Like a lot of them do, but like as a cosplayer, yeah. some of those people then start fucking in their costumes. Though I can tell you oh, firsthand, yeah, no, yeah. it's not safe for children. <laughs> of course, no, of course. no, no, no children allowed at Comic Con anymore. I think that's really the only solution. Like, this is disgusting. You're wearing a Superman costume in public. What if a kid sees you? Uh, yeah, it's and it's and if you start going down the route of because I think one argument I heard as well is like you can't wear any sexualized costumes around kids. That's because that's asking kids to participate in something that's actively sexual. It's like okay, well, I definitely know there's Spider Man, Spider Man, Elsa porn out there, so that though can't have those costumes anymore. Probably better to get rid of all superhero costumes. Also, like almost every occupation is somebody's fetish, so we should probably get rid of those also. Mm -hmm. So no more uniforms. Up, it ends up yeah, no uniforms. God, they can't even wear their own school uniforms anymore because those have been sexualized. This is how we can get people on board with abolishing the police. <laughs> oh, I mean, there, there's this a reason <laughs> there, there's a reason why like a lot of people like have very sort of militarized and like cop-esque like leather gear. Uh, there's a reason why that fetish exists in the community. But um, I think going more back to um, the point of like leather and latex and wearing something because it makes you feel um, you know empowered and makes you feel more like yourself. I totally have that. Like I have, I have a closet of like a bunch of latex and and pvc and stuff and i wear that because i feel good when i'm wearing it i'm not wearing it because i'm like soliciting people to have sex with me i'm wearing it because it feels good and latex is expensive okay it's expensive and i am not necessarily going to sully that um with lots of friction and having to keep it constantly uh maintained all the time with like lots of of big activity and also it's interesting because people mentioned k-pop stars but also um latex fashion is very avant-garde like there's so there's so much if you go to like high-end runway shows if you follow a lot of big designers there are high-end latex designers there's um william wilde atsuko kudo that literally design latex for you know presumably vanilla maybe with the exception of rihanna uh like 
mainstream pop stars that like wear latex uh, to music videos and to performances and stuff so even like latex and leather like those things i think are, are even in not every case coded for kink but are coded for luxury because they're typically handmade custom pieces that are very very labor intensive and that you have to basically invest enough money in to be able to afford um so if anything there's a little bit of a class element to like certain like uh to to kink gear expectations which is like a whole other conversation um but it's to say that like this kind of thing is always sexual i think is ignorant of the way that this material is used in so many other contexts and to that um feeling sexy or wearing something that makes you feel nice and good is not having sex Mm -hmm. i'm seeing people say that be, you can't say that it's not sexual yeah. if you want to feel sexy, but then you kind of get into that argument, which was somewhat touched on some of these debates, is like, what about wearing a bikini to the beach? If you feel sexy in a bikini or a Speedo, does that mean that you are showing sexual energy? Does that mean you're trying to have sex at the beach? No, but you can feel like you are attractive and handsome or sexy or whatever terms you want to use for yourself while wearing different kinds of clothing. Um, And to that point, you're going to be seeing, as someone who's also marched in a pride parade, behind us, we have women with their their boobs out and they're being empowered and they've got, you know, their nipples covered, but they have a lot of nudity. And in front of us is a a float with go-go boys on stripper poles and thongs. But for whatever reason, the leather contingent is getting that flack of being mm. too sexual when we're we're marching in a parade, whether in a hood or in leather gear or with a flag, we're not trying to have sex at that parade. There are rules and guidelines that every float has to follow, and the women behind us are following it, the, the guys on the stripper poles in front of us are following it, and also we are too. If there was anything being done that was against the rules, then you would see that with the leather contingent being pulled. But we're very, very, very conscious of what we're wearing because we don't want to be seen as inappropriate in that way. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like, this is, like, one of the things that, um, you know, I I got really upset. I was just, I mean, this is, like, the the idea that pride is, like, an excuse for, like, creeps to, like, have sex in front of kids or, you know, like, whatever has been, is the oldest conservative lie in the book. I remember hearing that when I was, like, 12 years old or whatever. Like, and, um, I mean, yeah, no, I, I, you know, like you were saying, uh, Amp, like, it's not in any way, uh, I don't think anyone who's, like, marching in the parade or on a float is trying to have sex at that time, (laughs) you know, like, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not a sexual act. It's a yeah. It, it, it it's so much more than that, and it's I you know I think I think it's um uh not just like weaponizing it as a way to remove uh like to you know sort of um remove kink from pride and um uh you know as a sort of form of like homophobia. But it's also like it, it's reducing that advocacy and that like uh, uh, yeah I don't I don't know exactly what you call it, but that like action to just these this is guys trying to like get off you know instead of this is people celebrating who they are and fighting for their rights for equality and fighting for their rights to exist as they are you know yeah especially in this climate that seems more appropriate than ever when we see multiple legislations that are literally fighting sex in the name of sex trafficking and keeping keeping the kids safe you know think of the children i think children should be safe I think we should protect children. Obviously, I am not arguing that we should not do that. I need to make that very clear because the second I start talking about this, someone will be like, oh, well, he just, he doesn't like kids. And not the case. Um, I'm, I'm saying that in this environment where we have so many politicians and religious groups putting things together like SESTA FOSTA, which are stop online sex trafficking acts that have been put into motion and have actually passed in politics. These laws actually lead to more censorship that makes stopping sex trafficking harder. And there are actual studies, psychological studies, of how Think of the Children leads to more censorship that attacks marginalized communities because generally it is done as a a scare or fear-mongering facet or aspect of whatever movement's happening, which leads to even more dangerous instances, scenarios, environments, and there's actual facts for that. There, there are psychologists that go on the record and talk about it. In fact, let me pull up the book that I'm, I'm trying to think of right now in my head, which I can't. 
Um, <laughs> but there is actual facts to back that up. It's not just scapegoating. It's not straw manning. And, and why we're not using these arguments with actual evidence behind them is what really makes me upset. Yeah. I, I think that makes me upset because I, um, as far as I can tell, we kind of we talked at the beginning of like, why is this discourse happening? And there is definitely every year, it happens a little bit earlier every year, somebody gets upset with some kind of take about pride and this whole thing happens again. And I think this year it happened because there was somebody that was 16, like said that they were like too innocent to see something like this at Pride. And like, that's where this started. That's why Shu made the take that Shu made and how Vosh chimed in mm. and all the whole thing ended up, ended up snowballing the way that it did. And why the focus has been on kind of that protect the children argument in a way that I don't think it necessarily has been in years past mm -hmm. and what i find frustrating is the fact like I, I think you mentioned this as well earlier is um i i don't know of any specific instances that are being cited about um this is a way a child was hurt at pride or this is a this is how pride is being used as a grooming cult for children uh i, I and if there is that harm happening i obviously want to see it reduced i never want any children to be hurt but again it goes back to sort of this vacant outrage out, outrage at something that's going on but nobody seems to be able to specify any real harm being done outside of i think adults online fearing that harm is happening without evidence being present yeah and and every instance that has been like well this person was doing sex of pride has been i saw this thing at this part and whenever I ask, like, was that part of the, the leather people in a contingent or was it a booth? And they're like, well, it was someone leading someone else around on a leash. And I'm just like, okay, we can, we can use these, these straw men um, and make arguments based on your opinion or what you say you saw. But at the same time, those people are not part of the, the leather contingent. They're not part of the parade if they're just standing around. And also, um, how do you know that they're kinksters? And how do you know that they're part of this community? The number of times that I've worked at actual kink conventions, which are absolutely age-gated, you have to have an ID to get into it, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of vanilla, what I would call vanilla normies, just kind of there seeing what's going on. They buy gear, they put it on themselves, and they don't know what they're doing. I have been tased <laughs> by someone who bought a taser because they thought it was cool, <laughs> and then oh, they no. want to just try it on people at the event. Like <laughs> What? God. Okay, that's just not kink ignorance. That's just general. That's assault, but... <laughs> yeah, it's just assault. Well, that's, I mean, I think that speaks to the problem is that, like, the th things that are crimes that people are worried about are already crimes. Like, people mm -hmm. masturbating in yeah. front of children is already a crime. If these things happen, yeah. they are already crimes. Banning kink, if somebody is doing it, if, if people are Trojan horsening into pride events to hurt children using kink as an out, like, if they're doing something wrong that's right. either against the codes of conduct or is a crime more generally in the area where they live, that's, I, I don't know what else you want to do to that besides constantly calling cops in on people at Pride. And I hope as a queer community, we can understand why maybe that might be a little bit problematic to do at a Pride event that's typically commemorating Stonewall. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, the, the, uh, the point that, people kept um, uh, telling me when I try to get involved in the pride, kink at pride discourse was, uh, Oh, just because like, you know, like with the girl in the, the dog costume thing, like, Oh, she doesn't know what's going on with these dogs. That makes it okay. So you think it's okay for someone to like molest a child because she doesn't understand what's happening. And it's like, no, obviously that is like galaxies away from just like, a child seeing somebody wearing leather and there's like mm. we do we are going to draw a line before it gets to like involving a child in a sexual you know act yeah uh, i mean this sort of comes back to like you know like uh, the discussion earlier of like wh what is pride for and who is it like i mean who is it necessarily yeah. it, it about i mean like it's I, for children, I, right? I, Pride's for kids. Well, yeah, like, like I go to, like, uh, I'll go to, like, you know, like, like, Pride when it's happening in Toronto, and it's, like, um, I, I always feel like, you know, I'm, you know, a guest there, not, like, it's for me, and it's, like, obviously, and, like, you know, there, there are so many, you know, large, like, street festivals or events, sporting events, where it would not be a safe place for an unattended child that we don't get upset about those, and, 
yeah, like like uh, the idea that like it's um it, it's it's there it's there uh uh the most important thing is for it to be child friendly mm. is wild. I mean, this is this is some like you know um uh when when I was like posting about this on Twitter to like promote the stream, it was mostly a joke, but also like I posted the like Raytheon Pride post. Like, this is that <laughs> yeah. shit, you know? Like this is um uh. Like, 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 what? Yeah, what do you think Pride is supposed to be? It's not if, if it's just supposed to be like kid friendly, corporate friendly, or is it supposed to mean something more than that? Yeah, and I, I think um, so. There's a couple of things I, I'm kind of trying to watch all the different chats going on. We got one question from a person that yeah. I think was probably directed towards um, Amp and I. That was, "What do you do if your kid or young child works on a need doing BDSM?" Which I think is is maybe. It less a quick answer for me, so I'm happy to talk about that. And then I think people are asking for a specificity on what kink and pride means, which I think is important to get to. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's the crux of so much of this conversation is what does kink and pride mean and what people are even really mad at? Yeah. Uh, also, just want to say sorry. We, this is a much bigger stream, much bigger audience than we normally get. And also, we don't normally do like full like sort of panel interviews so i'm trying i'm trying to keep an eye on the chat and gonna try yeah. and address stuff after like later on but um gotcha. yeah sorry yeah. about that we're, uh, we're if, normally a bit more responsive and if maybe it's easier i don't know how you set up your live streams normally um we could always just like make time at the end for like a q a mm -hmm. if people want that if we feel like we want to keep going uh, maybe that's more manageable. Sure, I have yeah, I have dual great. monitors, so like I can kind of like lizard eye around mm -hmm. at like all these all these <laughs> things going on. Um, but the the to the person asking like, what do you do if like a child walks in on you doing BDSM? Ideally, you create a scenario where a child can't walk in on you doing BDSM. That's why we have things like public dungeons. You get a sitter. You you go to a BDSM dungeon. You you do kink with your partner. You go home. The sitter is like hope you had a nice night and then you you just have a normal family time but i mean there's like there's the conversation gets very complicated because there's so many different ways of engaging in bdsm that walking in on isn't even necessarily the question because there are people that have like 24 7 bdsm relationships um and i've taken many classes on like how to you know successfully separate kids from from seeing things that they aren't necessarily like emotionally or mentally like equipped to know how to process at a young age. Um, but there, there are lots of things you can do to prevent that from happening. If you don't specifically want your child to see you doing BDSM. Cause I think there is a difference between like your child witnessing you do something versus like big exposure to sexuality in general. Um, that maybe would affect the child psychologically in a different capacity. But I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know what that would be. But also to that point, I have been to uh, I have been hired to speak at actual conferences with psychologists to medical professionals mm. on panels about BDSM and kink. And in these panels, we talk about what psychologists and therapists actually answer as far as questions. Kids of all ages are already asking questions about sexuality and what gay men are doing if they're kissing, or teens are asking what CBT is. The kids have the internet. And so if the kids are finding this stuff, yeah, true. and they're going to find it because there are studies that show that kids are finding porn, even if we try to stop them, which again, I'm saying we should protect children from things that are not, you know, not for them. Mm -hmm. But but people marching in a leather contingent at Pride is not the most abusive or aggressive or sexual thing you're going to see at Pride. Mm -hmm. And so if you're taking your kids to that event, there's going to be questions and if the parents aren't ready for those questions, that might not be the right event to bring your kids to. Like, it is not someone else's right. job to educate your child, but it is also your job to make sure that your your child is prepared for the world. Mm -hmm. Isn't that things. just such a warning sign that, like, people are literally saying, like, how am I supposed to explain this to my child? Like, the exact yeah. thing people used to say about just, like gay people in general like mm -hmm. yeah. well, who's that comedian who has a joke that's like um i don't know it's your shitty kid you talk to him <laughs> i think yeah. like, a bunch of points out of things like i think your shitty kid should die or something <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, like really edgy <laughs> i don't care throw him down a well or whatever yeah and to that though i think the biggest um laugh i had was one of the one of the major arguments or, or people arguing for kinksters shouldn't be at pride after getting a bunch of takes from the internet, immediately said, oh, well, my argument was actually that there should be family-friendly prides and all-ages prides, which already exist. Like, that is already a thing. 
So if you are causing this to trend and causing this divide on the internet, why are you doing that if your main argument was you think that there should be family-friendly specific prides and just normal prides, which are already things in major cities all over the world? Yeah. I... Which made the argument mute. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's uh, and that's what I saw a lot because I think there was this very hyperbolic initial reaction of like, gosh, there's these these gay men that are having these erections strain against their cod pieces and how disgusting is that? And then when they actually took the time to dig down into the argument, they retreated so far that it ended up being, well, I just think we should have kid friendly spaces at Pride and have adult only spaces, and it's like, well, that's not even an argument because what you're why are you talking about this? Because that's already how Prides are organized. Like you could look at the Seattle Pride like itinerary and it's like like how to like alternatives for policing for queer communities and like and you know he's all these like really like some are family focused there's there's story hours there's finger painting some but even the adult stuff is like vanilla queer community topics or stage performances from local like gay artists it's it's where are these things that are happening that people are afraid of? So it just it ended up being that people walked things back so far that it was you're arguing for things that already exist. And the thing that really, I think, illuminated this argument for me is like people pretended that dress codes and conduct codes don't exist. Um, maybe not mm. every pride is well organized enough to have publicly available conduct and dress codes. They they should. That seems like a basic part of event organizing when you're going to have hundreds of people show up potentially. But if you have a public organized pride event, you're typically going to have some kind of conduct standard, some kind of dress code. And so it feels like to um, me, the onus should be on people that want to go to read dress codes, understand the event better. And then decide, does this event align with my values and what I want my children to see? And if it doesn't, then don't go. And this is the same advice I give to people that want to go to BDSM events or dungeons. If you were squicked out by by blood, for example, don't go to a dungeon or a play party where the rules say that blood is allowed. If you don't want to see people in, if you don't want to see the local leather contingent, don't go to the event where they're going to be. Or how about you join the organizing <laughs> committee where you live and then say, hey, I want to have this kind of event instead and then make that happen instead of complaining about things and saying, like, for me, it's the implication that everything is kinky and we need to make a small safe space for children because it's like it's the, yeah. the opposite is true like if you're kinky you get like half of a block after 6 p.m and like everything else is is more catered towards like either young people or queer families and like that if that's how it is mm -hmm. that's fine but i think it's again it, it goes back to is <clears throat> Is it an actual problem that exists or are you just making something up to be mad at because you had an emotional reaction to something that you saw? And I would love to add, just because there's a bunch of questions revolving around this part of the mm. discussion and, and clarification, um, the history that we kind of touched on earlier as far as leather and how it incorporates into the LGBTQIA plus community and pride, um, we, we growing, let me, let me make sure I'm, I'm going to say this properly. Leather was a part of many people's identities. Leather was a part of the community back during the AIDS epidemic. Here in San Francisco, uh, Alan Selby, the owner of a store called Mr. S Leather, a very major retailer of kink and, and whatnot, helped to fund a bunch of AIDS-related foundations that not only fundraised a whole hell of a lot, but made sure that we were using everyone in our communities, our dykes on bikes, our butch leather women, our gays, our, our trans brothers and sisters, were a part of making sure that when people got sick, they had someone there to help them. They had a backup plan when their family dropped them at the blink of an eye. And when they did die, there was a process in which their goods, their gear, their loved things, and their possessions that needed to be passed on because there is historical value exactly a part of and present in and prevalent to the community here that is LGBTQIA+. There were people in place because the leather community helped to enact and put that together. You can't erase that history. And so the people in pride, the people that are marching in their leathers, some of them wearing leather that was passed down upon down upon down to people from back then in our history, that is a huge disrespect to tell them that they cannot march in that parade where they are being appropriate and they are being in line with all the guidelines and they are just trying to show their pride and respect their history.
Yeah. That is where that connection exists. And to say that the leather has nothing to do with that is ignorant and doesn't actually be, it's not based in fact. It's not based in history. We have archives. We have the leather archives that show how all of this is connected. Mm-hmm. And I, I welcome questions, but like you can't you can't come in here and say that there's no connection there mm-hmm. when we have documentation of all of that. Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. And, and the reason why we have to have the leather archives in the first place is, like I mentioned earlier, like there were certain segments of the gay community that thought in order to be accepted in mainstream society that they literally had to cut out photos and like destroy evidence of their like kinky brothers and sisters existing at all and being present at the same events. Um, so we have, and there's actually, I-, I would love to see if I can find it again, but actually on my Patreon, I think last year around this time, um, I found a really, really good series of videos on YouTube that are interviews of, of a queer men and women that survived the AIDS epidemic that were leather, that were part of the BDSM community and like how those two things intersected. As it turns out, uh, leather dykes, so queer women that, that do BDSM in the leather community, they were some of the first like people that reached out to gay men that they knew to help them because everyone was so terrified of this disease that they didn't even want to be in the same room as them. And I think um, because so many of our elders from that part of history passed away, I think um, certain segments of millennial and like Zoomer queer people, like it's it's hard to imagine how devastating that was. Like the, the sheer destruction that that did for our history and our understanding of like our self-concept of what it means to be in this community. Um, and, and I think that is very illuminating because people are, are, don't understand that connection and how strong it is. And it's not even just with the AIDS epidemic. Like who do you think it was that was beaten off the police at riots? <laughs> it was, it was, the, it was the kinky leather bears on motorcycles. Okay. It was leather dykes on motorcycles <laughs> that were doing it. Um, and, and to have that be ignored and, you know, essentially, uh, vanilla wash and a quick clarification for people that are listening. When pump amp and I say vanilla, we do not mean that in a derogatory way. We mean that in the sense of describing something as not being kinky. Um, it's never intended in a derogatory fashion, unless you're like a 15 year old zoomer that uses anything as an insult on TikTok. Um, it, it, it's, it's just a descriptive <laughs> term. We're not trying to talk down to anybody. It's just our word for people that aren't kinky. True. Yeah, there, there, there is no hate here in any of these these discussions. Even if you don't understand the topic, or you come in here with a question that you might think is is disrespectful, I'm not taking it that way. But I am going to respond using fact and not emotion here. I'm going to get emotional, maybe because it's a very emotional topic talking about AIDS and the people we've lost. But that's not because I'm getting mad at you. That's because I'm very passionate about this, and I'm I'm very tired of people telling me that. Kingsters are trying to have sex in front of kids at Pride. That's not what we're there to do. Again, we are trying to pay homage to our history and be prideful. Mm-hmm. Totally. Honestly, you spend so much money on your like kink gear or whatever. Like, it's nice to have a thing you can actually show it off. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let people know. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know uh, about AMP. I haven't been to a BDSM event in like two years at this point, almost, because I, w- I was on vacation. I was in Europe immediately before the pandemic started, and so I think my last event that I went to was like December 2019. So, uh, you know, my my nice stuff, my nice stuff has not seen the light of day in quite a long time. Oddly enough, my last event was literally right before everything locked down, and it was mm-hmm. Australia Mardi Gras. Um, and if you want to talk about sexual stuff there, <laughs> and lots of people oh, yeah. that were underage, I was wearing shorts that were nicely fitted, but not mm-hmm. nude, and uh, like a harness and a, a, a kind of hood that like sat on top of my head, like mm-hmm. surrounded by drag queens, people with their you know boobs out, paint over that, but like that's. If I'm the most aggressive thing there, like, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, Mardi Gras, yeah. No, that's actually Wait, so I funny. Didn't like, see any of these same people um, upset about uh, Australian Mar- Mardi Gras, <laughs> yeah. or like any Mardi Gras. Like that is a <laughs> yeah, uh, that is a really good point. That is, <laughs> I mean, I, I like. It's also like I've seen a lot of people like you know like respond by like you know showing how like oh like you know um um uh, as uh, as as you were saying like how um. Uh, you know, uh, there is so much like sex and, you know, sexism in like so much media and Mm -hmm. people have sort of responded, well, we think that's bad too, which 
Sure, but I mean, like, I think that there's, you know, plenty of stuff that, like, you know, I, I definitely didn't see, um, uh, you know, the people who are currently upset about, like, um, you know, think of the children around um, uh, King Cat Pride um, upset about, like, Lil Nas X's, like, latest video, who has a very young audience, where, you know, it, like, it, it is it is so um, uh, selectively applied, this, like, um, this concern that they um that they're supposedly yeah. motivated by and, yeah. I, and you can draw those same parallels for something like wap or a miley cyrus video yeah, that yeah. features latex the entire time um not being age restricted not uh, being fully monetized ads all over the yeah. place trending kids are going to see it but the second that a, a queer person talks about some leather history they get age restricted why like that is that is so inherent to this discussion because it is this capitalistic what is appropriate and needs to be rated G unless of course it's a famous person or someone that has a lot of money and wants to put it into the platform then it's okay and yeah. I'm not saying that I dislike Little Nas X or Miley Cyrus but I'm saying that you can't you can't pick and choose when it's queer content about history and leather and that's bad but then see something like WAP or Little Nas or Miley Cyrus and be like. That's good. Kids need to have exposure to that because that that teaches them about sex. It, uh... Uh, well, well, I would almost even say that the the, the thing that I go to not is not even Mardi Gras. I don't know how common this is elsewhere, uh, but naked bike rides in the college town that I yes. that I that I went to, um, we had we had Pride and I. Um, the, it turns out uh, the the BDSM dungeon I, I went to there we had a booth at Pride and like it was a little like sex positivity information center to like get people to come out to the dungeon if that aligned with their interests it was a college town but like professors have kids there are definitely younger people that live in the area I mean there was an elementary school like in the town like it was it wasn't just like only college students that went to Pride um but with naked the naked bike ride was essentially pride part two like it was it was nothing but lesbians and their subarus and mountain bikes and like full <laughs> nudity just body paint and nudity and like that was the whole thing and of course um the way that it was set up was like uh, you know, people knew the parade route that was advertised in advance so there presumably was a way to not view it if you didn't want to view it but again it goes back to the idea of well Prides also have dress codes. Prides also have conduct standards. You can infer what you're going to be getting into based on those rules before you get into there. But nobody's ever said anything about like, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have slut walks. We shouldn't have naked pride. We shouldn't have like naked bike rides because uh, that's going to mm. harm the children in some way. But body paint's also a kink. Did anybody think about that? Sure. Like you can definitely yeah. do body paint kink stuff. So it's interesting where the line is drawn with like what's acceptable mm. and what's not. And I think what I've seen a lot of is I cannot think of a single person in this entire discourse that has given an example of a woman in some kind of sexual fetish attire at pride and been like, this is wrong. It is always representation yeah. of gay men or pan men or bi men. And I'm like, this is interesting. Why are we so concerned about the predatory gay men in this conversation? Because there are lots of leather women. We've said the word leather dyke like five yeah. times in this conversation so far. They are out there. They are there. Why are we concerned about this group and not so much about gr this group? And does that maybe indicate where the emotionality in this conversation is coming from? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michelle yeah, it's Pfeiffer also, um, and it's also, uh, Halle Berry um, as Catwoman, like in yeah. leather with like a whip. Like nobody got upset about that. I mean, I will say I don't think that um, Catwoman should be shown at Pride. It's a bad movie. <laughs> it is not a good. It's not good. It should be like, shown anyway. Someone in the chat mentioned this. Um, I think, uh, like, uh, to add on to what you were saying, Edia, that like there has also been um, uh, some uh, some of this directed at trans uh, trans women too. Is uh, uh, like I've seen. Uh, I think it's in uh, Shoes uh, post that like uh, drag is offensive or like th there has absolutely been a um well, she uh, said drag is inherently element. sexual mm. oh yeah 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 right Which i is not, not true yeah i think that drag is not inherently sexual i think that we have shows like rupaul's drag race that does get sexual in many ways shapes and forms but at the same time that you make that sexuality comment and, and like argument drag has been there since the beginning drag queens were at stonewall and before that um if 
if you are going to say that kink is not part of the acronym, neither is drag. And I don't think either of them should be excluded, but you can't talk about one thing just because it's too sexual for you and then say, but drag's not too sexual. When in fact, drag can be, not always, but can be very sexually explicit and is there to push the envelope. Like drag queens have always been there pushing on political argument statements and making making those statements with how they dress and what they do and how they stand up. They're on the, the front lines of these marriage equality acts or when we're trying to stop conversion therapy, they're on the front lines and they're at the pol- like they're at the courthouses speaking and talking just because that's who they are. The same way the kinksters are, the same way we were we were there for March for our lives. Like it, it is it's a form of being politically active. And yes, it's outside of the bedroom and we might go home and then do not politically active things in the bedroom, but like you, you don't have to be having sex to be wearing leather Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think like pride in general is kind of like one of those things where it's just like um just just existing is itself a revolutionary act for like Mm -hmm. gay people and if you're like you know kinky if you're part of the leather contingent or you know a drag queen or 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 whatever like pride is a place for you to like express that part of yourself and pride isn't meant to be a place for everyone to like get used to gay people and like for kids to go and be like, Oh, this is okay. Or or whatever. It's meant for like a historically oppressed uh, group of people to, you know, have a place to be themselves. And I, I don't see why, I don't know. The whole optics argument, I guess, is just like, it assumes that the, the purpose is, not it's not for the uh you know people of the queer community it's f- to convince everyone else that this is something that should be allowed when you know that's not really the the point as far as i and, can tell no you're you're correct and on that emotional reasoning which is a form of assumption which is a, a fallacy is trying to rely on mind reading and your own prejudices If you are trying to mind read, you're going to always go to a a bad place because you have a preconceived idea that kink is already bad. The same way that you you might think drag is always sexual just because you've only seen RuPaul's Drag Race and you're not seeing the drag races or the drag queens that are Mm -hmm. in front of politicians. Drag is not inherently sexual. Kink is not inherently sexual. Neither are part of the LGBTQIA acronym, but they're also not explicitly just Like, if you want to make that argument that kinksters are not all queer, drag queens are not all queer. There are straight drag queens, but we still allow them to be in our parades because they're marching either as one of us or with us as an ally. Mm -hmm. So, like, we can't keep we can't keep assuming like that. That's not conductive to a a discussion or a debate. And that that mind reading, like that prejudice, that is a form of like fallacious thinking Mm -hmm. and yeah. That's not that's not how arguments work. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 funny how much the the so-called professional political streamers uh seem to fail on these level of logical fallacies and then refuse to do research yeah. about the topics they discuss for four straight days. Uh which is a little <laughs> bit frustrating because it seems like they don't believe they need to do any level of research before having an opinion on these things because their gut reaction is apparently informed enough to have a complete opinion about a community they're not a part of. And I should clarify when I say a community they're not a part of, I mean the queer kink community. Not that they're not, I'm not not trying to be biphobic or invalidate anybody's sexuality or gender orientation or anything like that. But there is an intersection where being a queer kinky person is distinct from just being trans or just being bisexual or just being gay. And if you are, if you, if your foot is over here, you don't necessarily understand the experience of the culture of being over here, even though the two are very overlinked. And that's the part that's frustrating for me, among many other things, is feeling like research isn't necessary before just going with your gut assumption and and using that to steer the entire discourse and then call everybody pedophiles when they disagree with you and then see no problem with that because you had a thought one time on Twitter and was like, I need to change nothing about this stance. <laughs> But yeah. to that as well, I, I welcome people's opinions mm. if they're open to a discussion. But the, the people that we see in these in some of these discussions weren't having a conversation. They were yelling at their chat. They were banning people that disagreed. And they were not allowing for a discussion to be had. Yeah. And they were using that emotional reasoning, that distorted thinking, 
as fact, which is not how a debate or conversation should go on a topic like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for real. I mean, I think that this can, that can be a big problem with like um, debate uh, content in general. Is that I mean, you know, I I, uh, I I you know, I think I think it's great to have like these like this is why like we di really didn't want this to be like a debate. Is like you know, I think it's very good to have these, like types of conversations and have these types of like good faith uh, discussions. But I don't think that very often. Um, debates are about like war or i would say almost never are about like learning from the opposite side and developing your point of view so much as it's at least in, you know in the public spectacle area of debate then yeah mm. i think i think it can be yeah. it's about convincing an audience and not convincing the other person you're talking with or even like learning from the other person mm -hmm. which i think is is frustrating because i've definitely had individual people that have talked to me that have said uh you know either myself or amp or somebody has sort of changed their opinion in a positive way about this that it, it seems to me the only thing that's happened is like people that are engaging in this primarily from a debate perspective are just interested in doubling down and literally putting gasoline on a fire because they don't seem to care about the consequences of discourse uh, on on stuff like this, which is uh, I think frustrating and irresponsible, but uh, I I so I I think there's just like there's so much that we could talk about. I don't know if there's like specific things that we haven't talked about um, yet that you wanted to make sure to get one, into. In one terms thing of I would reactions, yeah. I mean, and this isn't exactly a reaction, but it is something that, like, um, I've been um, seeing more stuff about. I wasn't really aware of, like, these specific terms and stuff, but um, I, I think someone uh, in the chat just mentioned it, too. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Ina Linda, um, pride should not be uh, pandering to cis uh, heteronormativity. Um, and, like, I mean, I've... Uh, I've been seeing more of like uh, like the distinctions between like um, the terms of like um, um, I think like uh, queer normalization, uh, queer acceptance, queer liberation, and I was wondering if yeah, like you guys could like talk a little bit about the distinctions between those concepts and sort of what that means, you know? Mm. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think drawing parallels from some of the first prides. Sorry, Evie, not, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, sorry. I was just. Um, I, I'm going to copy and paste the thing from the Twitch chat into my chat so people can can read that question. So go ahead. Of course. Oh, right. Um, that is that is literally what pride is against is being mm. heteronormative and conformity. That is literally how pride started. Uh, Sylvia Rivera was almost booed off stage for trying to speak her story, her rights, her her life and how she was dropped and pretty much mistreated by the queer community for trying to exist and be a part of this liberal or sexual liberation, the sexual liberation front. We, we, we cannot try to erase people that are in our community just because they are not what people on that day when she was trying to get on stage to speak her mind, they said that she was not allowed because it was inappropriate and that she was not part of this event, which is just so unfair and so wrong and so against what pride is about. The kinksters are there trying to pretty much shield people from a lot of these aggressive takes by just teaching about sex education, by fundraising, by taking care of ourselves and, and our brothers and sisters through the AIDS epidemic. Like, I don't know how many times we have to kind of go around this circle and say that we've been here since the beginning, making sure that our community has solace, has education, has support. And then that inverse is not there just for the sake of corporations or family friendliness or conforming to what people want to see as the good queers. Mm. That's that's not how this works. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah no, like the uh, talking about like the like uh, we were talking about how like uh, there was a Vosh's uh, take, I think, where he was saying he was describing pride as a queer friendly event <laughs> that was like pretty funny because like that's that's it's yeah. not a queer friendly event it's queer like what what do you it's mean a queer event yeah. <laughs> yeah like it's not it's it, like queer friendly like, like the queerness is an afterthought what the fuck are you talking about man i um, i think tweets are hard and i'm not yeah, perfect at hard. saying things either and by trying to say one thing you might have meant another and that's totally fair but like the take wasn't that ain't it you know i just yeah no yeah mm. yes to be fair absolutely yeah. it's easy to to fuck up in a tweet so uh i don't want to come down too hard that would be that would make me a, a huge hypocrite because i've also been uh unclear in 280 characters 
Um, do we want to go to the the uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> reacting to bad uh, takes on Twitter, or what do we think, Sam? You just sent me your um, uh, tweet. I just put it in the watch together. It's sometimes it works for Twitter, sometimes it doesn't. I think we just have to like press play and all watch at the same time. But oh, um, okay. okay, okay, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm sure the yeah, video. Evie, uh, but yeah. I uh, I I'm um, trying. Yeah, well, I have it. I have it in the watch together. If we want to uh, take a look at that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Let's okay. let's get uh, uh, let's get salty. <laughs> let's, let, let, let's do some salt here. Okay. Uh, uh, so we need to be. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. East side Mario's. All right. Let's okay. uh, check this out. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's watch the video yeah. first and then uh, comment uh, on it, yeah? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I also want to mention for people that are watching this, I clipped this myself. I, I watched his stream and I clipped this. Um, <laughs> so I know editor. exactly the context for this. If there are questions about, oh, this is out of context, I know what the context is 100% for this statement. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, um, shall we count, do a countdown yeah. and then everyone hit play at the same time? Uh, one, two, three play anyway um i think those the logic is at least applicable you know it, it refers in both cases i made that argument to people and they said pup play wasn't always sexual that to me is the stuff that really sets off my alarm bells by the way people like oh yeah bdsm outfits aren't inherently sexual pet play where you have a collar around your throat and are being led around by a dom in leather that's not inherently sexual for these people are either predators or delusionally online Go to anyone on earth and ask them if that's sexual. Okay. This is okay. Sure. Anyway. Any... All right. That's yeah. Uh, apparently I mean, you you are basically a walking like refutation of this, uh, like point, uh, Evie. Yeah. And, um, to, to reiterate, this is another segment of this. I didn't clip because it's really short. An hour and a half later, he makes a very similar statement to the effect of like, it is it is a lefty you need to touch grass moment if you believe kink can be non sexual. And I think the charitable let's let's steal man, Mr. Vosh here for a moment. The uh, charitable right. interpretation is that he is saying in general, in if you asked, you know, survey says is kink sexual or not? I think the last week has demonstrated that the majority at the average person would consider say uh, to kink to be a sexual thing however my interpretation of that statement is kink is so obviously sexual you would have to be literally delusional to ever believe otherwise anybody that is saying that it's not sexual is a predator or doesn't know what the hell they're talking about which is 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 mind-blowing to me i would mm -hmm. hope his actual thoughts are closer to the steel man take but i'm not confident that's what he actually believes right mm -hmm. and i mean yeah i think that like basically i all different kinks have like sexual and non-sexual aspects and like you know people who participate in them for various reasons is is that mm -hmm. fair to say i mean yeah absolutely and and to that uh i then ask what is sex like you can't have this 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 conversation you can't be so loud and argumentative about the topic without clarifying what things are we've already talked about what kinks are we've talked about bdsm we talk about leather like what is sex is sex getting off is sex wearing something that makes you feel sexy that's really relevant to the argument that he's trying to make but he doesn't really give us that at least not in anything that i i, I was shared or watched or or saw within that any of the debates either we all have a, a different take on what it is um is a, is sex a, a, a ejaculation is sex being intimate with someone is sex making out like what someone finds sexy about uh, maybe a clown that throws pies in the face like people get <laughs> off to that yeah true. but but is that is that sex or is that just something that turns you on or like I, i'm i mean if i'm standing up i'm marching in a parade with a dog mask on i'm not aroused i'm not feeling arousal i'm i am not having sex with my partner and being intimate with my partner at that point in time, I'm marching in a parade. Mm -hmm. And that is not sex in my own definition of what sex is. Mm. Yeah, people are, are attracted to feet. Does that mean that barefoot is legal is a now a fetish uh, movement? There like, are... No to walk around with sandals on? 
there are document. I have seen documented efforts of people that talk about working at certain places where that is their fetish. Doctors that have doctors' fetishes, but they do not act on that fetish. They just enjoy their line of work so much and they are passionate about it. But no one is screaming and yelling that doctors shouldn't be allowed to doctor so long as they're being ethical. Like, right. yeah. If we're if we're trying to draw parallels that are, are a little bit out there, but but are something that we see in our culture. I, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm curious, like, uh, Evie, like, as a, an asexual person who participates in kink, like, what, what are, are your thoughts on this whole argument? Uh, I think, I think, like, in general, we having a question about what does sex even mean is very interesting because I've actually I pulled my own community about this before because um, I've had disagreements with people. Some people think that only vaginal sex counts as like actual sex, and like everything else is like the foreplay leading up to that or like doesn't count as much as like penis and vagina intercourse does um but it seems it seems to me that people making this argument about uh being sexual around children like they they seem to think that just existing in an object that could be sexy for some people counts as being sexual but whether or not kink is inherently sexual is a more general question i don't think that kink is inherently sexual i think it can be for some people i think a sexual relationship to kink exists in different degrees with different activities. It, it's not even a broad brush with people that do experience kink in sexual ways for some things. You might be sexually aroused by pain, but you might enjoy being tied up because you like that like tight, closed in kind of swaddly feeling. And that doesn't provoke any mm. sexual response from you, but it, it feels good in its own way. And, uh, you know, there's the bonding experience with the partners. There's the mental and emotional aspect. There's the sensual aspect of it. There's the actual like physical enjoyment of it like um you know it feels good to have your back scratched right like you, it might feel good to have like hot wax like poured on poured on your body simply because you like playing with those different tactile sensations um and it could also be because it's a catharsis right not even necessarily because you get sexually aroused by pain or something which is a very small portion of bdsm activities but also because uh being able to have that endorphin release in the same way that like people enjoy skydiving or being in hot air balloons or really tall roller coasters like there are lots of activities that have a similar kind of adrenaline rush and i could go on and on and on about the the science of it but there are mm. actual like scientific studies uh that that have been done that aren't necessarily on kink but are on closely related activities that we can kind of approximate from so for example, um, there it, there's a study that was done, I think it was by an anthropologist that uh, was talking about uh, people that did ritual hook pull suspensions, which is where they put like, sorry, like content warning. We're talking about blood here for a second. Uh, so it's like where you put hooks into your body, typically deep into the flesh, and you are suspended to some degree on those hooks. It's a very physically intense experience. It's a very emotional experience. And the reason why people do that in kink because it is something that also happens in kink is not because they get off to doing it and they're masturbating in one hand while this is happening it's because of that very deep emotional mental spiritual experience that can happen alongside of it and uh, there's other concepts like transient hyperfrontality and other ways of explaining like the activity that actually happens in the brain when you're engaging in kink that goes way beyond just genital part of the brain lights up erection happens you know that's way right. more going on than just that and i mean like for people who are involved in like 24 7 like sexual uh kink relationships you can't be like sexually turned yeah. on <laughs> yeah. at all hours of the day and night like that's like a, a part of it is just your life like mm -hmm. you know like if you're uh you know wearing leather and in, in public that doesn't necessarily mean that's like that you're having sex at that moment yeah and the, or that you'll have sex at all sorry yeah. Go ahead. or yeah yeah that's true that's and it. The, the argument that i saw is essentially well if it's reasonably assumable that if at some point you become you could become aroused by that thing it is inappropriate for you to therefore do it in public. And so essentially what that leads to is if you have any kind of 24-7 BDSM relationship, you just shouldn't be in public because at some point you might be aroused around a child. 
Um, which I don't know how society would function if that was the case. In that case, I don't think we could let like most teenage boys out of the house for more than 20 minutes at a time. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand like how that would work in like for a functional society, how we, how you could, cause I think it just, people talk themselves into these like logical corners where in order to maintain their point, they can't concede anything. And so they go, yes, mm-hmm. if you could cut, become aroused at any point, you should never be around children while you are doing something. And, Something I want to I want to speak to um, that we've talked or at least alluded to a lot about sort of what is uh, what does this kink at pride thing even mean? What does kink mean? And it, it, people are saying, oh, don't do kink in front of kids, meaning don't do a flogging, uh, you know, don't uh, don't don't do like a naked rope bondage suspension in front of the finger paint party. Like, obviously, that stuff. But then when you drill down into what these people are saying, they also seem to imply that simply wearing kink attire is the same as doing kink to the point where they're saying wearing a collar, like the one that I'm wearing now is inappropriate in public because you are trying to represent a sexual relationship because the reasonable person, whoever that is, could expect that to imply something sexual, which by the way, this is the argument that I wanted to make to this response Mm. is i don't know what could be more of a sexual symbol than like a christian wedding ring because if you are the kind of person that waits until marriage to have sex and your partner your person you're married to is the only person you've ever had sex with your wedding (laughs) ring is literally a symbol of god says it's okay that i (laughs) fuck this person and every single time i see somebody with a wedding ring i am reminded of them fucking that person and maybe (laughs) i don't want to be reminded of that (laughs) that's so funny that's so true (laughs) next time i see somebody with a a wedding ring i'm like i'm gonna be like cover up that filth (laughs) no children around disgusting I'm, there could be children who see your finger. I'm going to look at them and I'm just going to be like, nice. <laughs> yeah. nice. Oh, yeah. Give you them a high five. It. Yeah. It's, All I, right. You did it. You've had sex. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, like as an asexual person. married people be allowed at Pride? <laughs> yeah, no married people. It's now a singles only event. It's going to be a giant mixer. It'll be great. Uh, but it's funny because like, you know, in a kink relationship and there are lots of people that have power exchange DS relationships that are entirely non-sexual, that never have any sexual contact. So if we're worried about who's displaying their sexuality more prominently, it's actually more likely the person wearing a collar has a non-sexual relationship with their partner than the person wearing a wedding ring. At least at some point. There's True. obviously lots of married couples that don't have sex or stopped having sex at some point. But uh, <laughs> what, are, yeah, well, what are the percentages great. on that? If stand-up comedy has taught me anything, married couples never have sex. Uh, that that just that doesn't happen. Um, Comedians yeah. definitely uh, don't. They they really don't well, like their wives. Definitely. They talk about it a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there was a question uh, earlier on in the chat. I just wanted. I don't want to miss. Um, uh, this is, uh, I thought really interesting. Um, I think this is uh, sort of directed at uh, Evie. But um, mm. uh, this description of kink has an interesting crossover with altered states being the core of kink. Does that somehow link to the idea of kink being similar to the use of drugs? Uh, is that, um, if you break down everyday things, you compare them to drugs, release the serotonin to do stupid games, would you compare them to drugs? Um, I don't know. I feel like there's a cult, there's like a pharmacological definition of what a drug is. And then there's like a, a social definition of drug because like technically caffeine like alters your system. Mm-hmm. Nicotine alters your mm-hmm. system, but people don't generally refer to like toothpaste. coffee or even, or, or, or toothpaste or really dark chocolate or, or e-cigarettes yeah, food, as being drugs. Air. Um, so I, I think that's, I think that's, that's interesting. I don't know what label you would put on it necessarily. Cause I think there's sort of a, there's technically this thing contains something your bodily metabol your body metabolizes in this particular fashion that could be construed as a drug but like public use i think has a general um usually somewhat negative connotation to drug in particular as a term yeah yeah no i think it's it's probably true to say you can compare a lot of things to drugs you know you can be addicted to video games right like you can be addicted to facebook mm-hmm. there's they're yeah, all different yeah, ways yeah. of giving your 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 brain the, the the happy chemical 
All right. I mean, like even like uh, James, like I know you're you're uh, like um, more experienced with this, like in terms of like um, sensory deprivation stuff too. Like, I mean, that would in that like sense like be similar yeah. to drugs. Yeah. Sure. Oh, well, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> altered states. I don't know. Whatever. I don't think there's anything wrong with drugs, uh, obviously. <laughs> but like, mm -hmm. uh, like Minecraft mean, over here. Yeah, a little bit of Minecraft over here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean kink i guess you 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 definitely have like a a brain chemical thing happen mm. and uh mm -hmm. you could combine drugs and kink sure that that i mean that's that yeah yeah you could Correct. and there's a whole yeah, other debate in the community like particularly yeah that, between, that's a whole other mm. yeah it's a whole yeah? i don't know if that's twitch there's I don't know debate if, i don't yeah there's but conversations what? i don't know if we can we can have that conversation that having to say in minecraft every like two seconds but <laughs> Yeah, I, I think only if you're talking about yourself, but mm. in general, right? It should be a, should be okay. Mm -hmm. there, there are definitely but, circumstances where it, where it where it happens. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's uh, let's go let's go more into uh, um talking about like bad tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. About yeah. Tweets. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, we, I feel I feel like we've built up a good like background for everyone. Loving all the, um, the history, kink, yeah. the, the the queer community, Stonewall, all that. Uh, let's read some some takes from people, and we'll call them bad. We'll call them bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, okay. Uh, I I, th I feel like we should like maybe start with like um, the uh, uh, I don't know. Do, do we want to just go with the uh, the original one? I think uh, we we can definitely go off yeah. of uh, shoes take. Sorry, I didn't uh, I didn't get everything. Uh, all queued up and my uh, computer's screaming at me because it does not like what I'm uh, when I'm streaming. <laughs> that's that's oh, oh, it doesn't. Uh, what a vanilla I, computer you have, man. I, yeah. I, that computer needs to loosen up. I, I have like about it, every tweet humanly possible on my Twitter currently. So if your computer can't load stuff, I, I am also happy to uh, check the discourse. Do we want to go in like chronological order? Spiciness I, order. Let's go, like, what let's we go chronological. Right? Yeah, let's go chronological. Let's no let's go. Uh, let's let's yeah. let's create a history of the discourse. <laughs> for the record, can, uh, can, maybe yeah. um, uh, Evie could um, do like a screen share. Would that work? I mean, if you want to do that, have. that that might be uh, that might be uh, easier. Uh, oh, like within not on OBS, obviously, but in. Uh, uh, you can do it over Discord, yeah, okay. and then you can do a screen yeah, yeah. on on your uh, OBS. Okay, let me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to look for. Uh, um... uh, God, I have so many things happening on my, on my screen right now. Yeah. Uh... Um... Don't know if Ugh. Can I just... stream in, you know? Well, yeah, I have like, I have also, my chat uh, yeah. open. I have your chat open. I've got Discord open. There's a lot going on here. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Screen. Do you know how to share your screen? Uh, screen yeah, on. Yeah, I'm just trying yeah. to figure out if there's a way I can I can look at only one window. I think I, I think I have it. Let me let me see. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You I can mean, share your screen that's, or. That's, yeah, yeah I, I, there you go. Oh, I don't. I don't. This know. looks right. We're looking at Twitter. Okay, great. I should uh, actually. You know what? Um. Look, you guys can you guys can see all of all of my uh, book. Oh, can I not? It's not letting oh. me. I oh, can't... I can. I'm just cropping that out. There okay. you go. So I it's can't. Yeah. Uh, I can't seem to find my my mouse in this now. Oh, there it is. Did that allow? Oh yeah, yeah, stuff? yeah. Um, Relatable. Yeah. The 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 multiple uh, monitor struggle is very real. Yeah. So where did my mouse go? Okay. So we have a lot of we have a lot of tweets. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, oh, you're just going into your replies and <laughs> Yeah, I'm just close well, like, oh, I'm just yeah. well, <laughs> going back go. to the very beginning of the last several days of, of Amazing. my life. Uh I figured <laughs> that, that would be the easiest way to uh go about things. Uh and I think uh Amp also uh linked in the Discord chat that we have uh his oh, right. take from like twenty nineteen, I think, about uh about Pride and Kink going together, just to reference that this has oh, been going on that, for a long time. Like this yeah. is a this is a great thread, yeah. Okay, I, I definitely want to uh, uh, go into. Oh, yeah, this. a lot of, a lot of wisdom here. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to say as well that I would like to point out that if Lil, if Lil Nas S, Lil Nas X was wearing this skirt but had on leather cuffs, 
at a pride event, they would probably say that he was dangerous to be around kids. Oh. Vosh wouldn't have recreated would have been too sexual. Um, <laughs> oh my god, what are you people? What are you people? The doing? number of like Pepe's I'm seeing is, uh, yeah, concerning. Uh, I feel for you. I'm sorry. There's so <laughs> I'm so many sorry. Okay. Life has been uh, like... I remember it was right after the chocolate, the the <laughs> chocolate milk tweet. I think is kind of where this started. Because I remember, I remember seeing on my timeline he was talking about chocolate milk, and then I went to all sex is banned, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Okay, I think this is kind of. Oh yeah, this is the ma- the big let thread, me, right? Yeah. Let me also start with um like shoes. Uh, I don't know if I'm she's blocked me yet. I don't think she has. Hey, do you guys want like some 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 spicy tea about shoe? Oh <laughs> yes, please. Oh, <laughs> uh, so Shu and I actually used to follow each other, and I believe my dear friend Brittany Simon is in the chat on uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, Shu actually did a video with Brittany Simon, who was also at the time a, a BDSM uh, YouTuber, about her kink relationship like two or three years ago. <laughs> So right, it makes right. this all like a little bit spicier. Oh, Just I mean, like a lot of people entire think context that, I mean, that she was yeah. also kinky or at least was. Oh yeah. Um, she used to be in like a 24 seven, uh, DS relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, uh, uh, I think Sarah Zed like posted, uh, like a great tweet of just like how, like, uh, yeah. Uh, shoe is like, like wears like plenty of, um, like, uh, collars and stuff around. Um, I want to find that tweet. There's a, yeah. Okay. It's very good. Uh, So I feel like this is the first one chronologically I can find from, from Shu. I don't know if Shu maybe. Oh, Let's start at oh, the beginning. The okay, beginning of the story. Is. Here it is. This Shoe. is the first thing. This is Shu listening to Vosh and then. Fire, fire, and, fire, and fire, fire, this fire. Was, this is the thing that started it off. Um. Yeah, strong through Twitter is is dangerous for Twitch. Uh, can I just play this? Do we need to do the? the oh, video um, thing you again, uh, actually, yeah, <laughs> you, you can just play it. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, I think, so. I think you have sound. I don't up, think right? there's any gamer it's words a, it, in this one, but I don't. Vosh can be kind of dicey sometimes. <laughs> no, he I, should be. Yeah. He should be okay. Okay. Uh, I can't hear anything right now. Yeah, I, I do. I have. I may have proactively muted. Uh, Google. No, I didn't. It should be fine. Yeah. Prude types be. Say oh, I can hear, yeah. shouldn't be teaching no, it's about non-heterosexual identity in school, and we say sexuality isn't the same thing as being sexual. And then you guys cross your I fingers behind why. your it's backs, really and echoing run off, and say... Oh, it's probably because it's picking up through um, hmm. your guys' stuff because oh. you're not wearing headphones. I'll just mute me for, for, for good a second. Sounds good to me. And then just listen to the video. It should be fine. Okay. But actually, <laughs> actually, I'm going to wear oh, yeah. a fucking dog gimp suit at this public event and be in full visibility of uh, children while my throbbing erection strains the fabric of my tiny thong. Okay? Stop. And this isn't even to speak of the optics of it. You really want queer people to be represented in their entire... Then don't bring kids to Pride... Kids can be gay. Why are you ostracizing an under 18 demographic from a celebration of their identity because you're too horny to keep it in your fucking pants? Fuck you. Jesus. Kids should go to pro. Oh, wow, it it's should only be a cool done. thing for it should yeah. be a block party <laughs> with cotton candy and tie-dye shirt makers that where you use the rainbow colors to make tie-dye shirts it should be a community fair if you want a kink thing go to a private venue where you can find limitless fucking armies of gays who want their ass plowed by randos okay and we're not done yet we're not done no, no. This is so reductive. I'd love to explain how kink and pride is made my fucking orgy. No, stop. Your kink isn't a discriminated identity. It's not. I don't care how many times subs try to make it out to be. You being a leather fetishist is not a fucking demographic that you're oppressed alongside, okay? You're not celebrating the liberation of people who wear leather in public 
It's not a queer thing. Pride is queer. Straights wear leather. Gays wear leather. I don't care. Maybe gays do it more, but yes, it fucking is. All right, well, you know what else is part of queer pride? You all getting fucking bad. I actually can't believe you people. You're fucking... <laughs> Listen, people who are trying to tell me about history, <laughs> you're banned. I don't want to hear it. The, the, I'd like to remain historically illiterate and not be able to address this properly. The 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 pride with which he is like fucking I, like I just very quickly before you get into actually critiquing the the points as a fellow mm -hmm. content creator, I find it amazing that you would have that many people so consistently for days being like, I think you might have a bad take about this, and you being like. Actually, I think my take is fine, and I will never reevaluate a single thing about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, mm. yeah, it, that is a very, you know, common thing. I mean, I don't know. I uh, I definitely have been criticized as a content creator for stuff. I, I, you know, maybe not the best response to just be like, fuck you, you're banned. You're you banned. <laughs> like, yeah. I just need to know, does he want it to be queer friendly, or does he want it to be queer because it's... right that yeah that's that's one of his later tweets i believe where he describes <laughs> pride yeah, yeah. Queer believe... friendly it's like queer yeah queer people you can come yeah if you want I'll, you're I... invited yeah. i guess i, I can, you know uh... it, it's really for like um military recruiters cops and um you know the idf they've been having a um uh a, a tough a tough time lately so they should they're the most queer, and friendly then, you know, queer people can army. also come yeah. too yeah <laughs> Just, to be fair, I think Vosh did raise a ton of money for a Palestinian charity recently. That but. that was like the most confusing part of all of this is like, how can you do something so amazing like raising all of this money for a Palestinian oh, yeah. charity and then immediately like th like three eighty back around into like this type of point? It was, I had three a uh, three eighty. Is that like a degree uh, turn? Yeah, it's like you went. What you kind went of protractor are you using? That's like you, a twenty you went degree all the way around, and then you yeah. still went too far afterwards. You went all the way around, and then he slightly shifted away from his original. Opinion. Yes, uh, I'm trying to find. So there, the, here is the the quote unquote uh, queer queer friendly tweet, which is slightly farther ahead in the in the timeline. Uh, but it, mm -hmm. while we're having this conversation, we can at least. Ha have this available for the viewers to view. Let's yeah, of course. Of course. Feast your eyes, viewers. <laughs> Enjoy. Get cute shirts. Yes, oh. Pride should be a cool, queer-friendly block party you can attend to meet with organizers and get cute shirts. Everyone should be able to attend. It should be safe and uncontroversial. Dismissing accessibility as sanitation is a really underhanded and disgusting strategy. I mean, I don't know. Can we a talk about the block party you could attend? That doesn't seem mm. that fun. That seems See, like a like a, a university, like you know, what it, what do they call it when you're in like grade twelve and you're going around universities and getting shirts and shit? Like, pick me, pick me. Um, Amp. I I have a Amp. lot of issues with this take for many reasons, but mm. we'll, I mean, one of the most important ones being. There are so many other important discussions we could be having about pride and accessibility with, with actual people who have disabilities, um, with marginalized yeah, communities that are cool. that are a higher risk of, of violence and things like this, um, of just making sure that it is accessible. But the, the way he's using the term accessibility is very, um, I believe, incorrect based on, based on uh, just the, the way that we use it and the perspective that's being taken here, which seems very disjointed. Right, yeah. So his sentence is, dismissing accessibility as sanitation is a really underhanded and disgusting strategy. Like, it, it's not really the same conversation. Like, it's it's a conversation to be had about accessibility, but uh, that's, it, it, like, you know, if you have a disability, you know, you need like to have like a ramp to go into a a, a basement kind of thing. If yeah. you're if you're talking about like accessibility for like people who are going to be grossed out by leather, that's not actually a disability. I, I don't think. I well, it, oh, yeah. and the, the argument needs to be made like what is the there's a there's a huge difference between being uncomfortable and being harmed, mm -hmm. like being like. Mm -hmm. Ew, I don't like leather and trauma is is a big thing as well. And also yeah. at that point, there are people, at least that I've spoken with, that if we're gonna use 
examples in, in your personal lives, there are people that have gone through sexual traumas that go to pride and they see sex in a positive light that they find that healing. Mm. We have anecdotes and cases of yeah. that. So to say that that having sexual liberation and sexual topics like that present is going to harm people, that's actually the inverse in some cases. Damn, mm. yeah. So your really, discomfort, really... your your discomfort is not equal trauma. That that is that is two different things. And mm. and we are equating mm. it as the same thing in some of these arguments based on emotions and based on l- not logical thinking. Again, yeah. mind reading, scapegoating, fallacies. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it goes yeah, quite no, to like Oh, I, I was going to say, yeah. it seems like there's an overstatement of harm that happens on a fundamental level. I think possibly in part because our society denies help to people unless it reaches a certain threshold. Like unless you are literally being beaten senseless, like most people are like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know, figure things out for yourself. And so I think we've kind of created a condition where sometimes people feel like they have to overstate harm in order to have their concerns uh, be heard, which creates scenarios like this one. It creates conflation between accessibility and simply feeling uncomfortable because I, I and think people in the chat have pointed this out is uh, there is a very a real slippery slope here uh, to do we allow drag queens? And then from do we allow drag queens? Do we allow non passing trans people to do we allow trans people at Pride at all? Because lots of people right. are very uncomfortable with all of those things. And so I guess if we wanted to mm-hmm. appeal to as many, you know, mainstream heterosexual people as possible, it maybe makes sense to eliminate some of those groups from Pride. But then that doesn't actually, like, go with the values of Pride and, like, who's supposed to be represented at Pride. And and I, 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 and I know there's people in, the, in both chats that, that are, are, you know, they have disabilities uh, and they have accessibility issues with Pride events. And I think that should absolutely be centered because I know where I live, uh, a lot of the Pride events happen in an area downtown, which is has terrible parking. The only way you can get to it is by bus. Uh, you know, heaven help you if you have to take any sort of mobility aid over the horrible, you know, misshapen cobblestones downtown. Like it's, it, it's, you know, very, very real. Most of the buildings these things are in aren't ADA compliant. And uh, people kind of make little whimpers about having a problem with that. But why are we valuing people maybe being a little bit uncomfortable over like people that literally can't even physically get to pride in the first place because they aren't physically able to and nobody gives enough of a shit to Mm -hmm. speak up for them because they can't even physically get to the committee meetings to even have their voices heard in the first place uh yeah (laughs) absolutely yeah having kinksters present there does provide representation for people that might not understand that their kinks are valid and that them existing is not illegal there are so many people yes. that have that that trauma yeah. in them inside themselves or that that internalized homophobia that they think that kink is this terrible thing that they're never going to be able to experience that they're never going to be happy and having that kind of representation in a not overtly having sex in public sort of way like people just standing there in their gear saying hey we're the leather contingent makes it a friendly environment for someone that is able to go and practice kinks, but is unsure how and how to do it safely to approach them and be like, hey, I'm, I might be into this thing and I really appreciate what you guys have here and I would love to learn more. Let's talk. And we do that away from the crowds of people that don't want to be part of kink. You know, mm. like we're not trying to have those conversations exactly. with people that don't want to have those conversations. I'm not going up to every person at this parade and be like, hey, are you into kink? Are you into kink? Are you into kink? Are you into yeah. kink? You know <laughs> yeah. Know? That's not how that Where's works. your leather? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Why aren't you wearing a dog Let's mask go. right now? Yeah. And um, kink has so much that everyone can learn from. Yes. The reason that, that BDSM is this thing that people are not talking about is because kinksters have healthier relationships psychologically on the whole. Sorry to talk about the holes, but psychologically, Hey-o. based on the amount of communication that we have, the talking about wants and needs, covering pleasure, consent, there's so much you can learn from kink when you are having an educational perspective and a nice conversation instead of yelling. And I think that is a a valid point that we also need to bring up here as well when we talk about it. It's not just debaucherous things that are happening. Sometimes it's very loving, beautiful conversations about what makes us fully formed humans. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, it's also like I if I'm if I'm understanding, I, I think part of what his argument is like, and when, when he talks about accessibility, is that like you know, um, 
uh, like queer kids who are like underage, who like it needs to be appropriate for them. But I mean, I feel like uh, you know, there, there's a lot of like obviously like like uh, straw men, like ridiculous like o exaggerations about like you know what they would be experiencing there. But also like, wouldn't it also to some extent be doing them a disservice if all it is is just like. Um, cops waving rainbow flags at, <laughs> instead of like yeah. you know and actually, sorry sam yeah. as we've established cops are a kink so uh, that's oh right 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 right, 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 right. as someone uh, who was raised catholic in a catholic school for all of my life that was very uh harmful and actual trauma to who i am as a person that i had to unlearn because i was i was i'm not going to say it like it's not indoctrination, it's religion, but like it is very bad when you are told that you shouldn't exist and you're going to burn in hell your entire early life. And when I came out and I found that people were into the things I was into when it, when I was of age and I went and started into it and educating myself, but talking to this community that existed that was not trying to have sex with me, but approached me at a bar in an appropriate setting and was like, hey, you're into this? What do you, you have questions? Here are some lovely resources. Here are some lovely people. Here's where you can learn and be safe and not do anything that's actually going to hurt you because you're into this thing. And if you don't have education, you're going to try and practice it alone and harm yourself. I have lost actual people to breath play because we do not talk about the fact mm -hmm. that these things exist. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk about the safety and the precautions against that. And there are cases of kids and teens that have tried breath play because they, they started learning about their bodies. And they killed themselves because we do not talk about topics like this in an educational manner. Mm -hmm. That is why education and conversations like this and representation in a not overtly sexual, you're not having sex in public sort of way is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that really gets back to like why we both make the kind of content we do on BDSM in the first place is it's very widely misunderstood and a quick definition for people who are watching this uh so breath play refers to like choking like generally restricting airflow hands around the throat that kind of thing there's a whole if you if you want to know what it is we can have a whole other conversation about that maybe we have time for a q a at the end we can get more into exactly yeah. what that is but um I'm sure this is probably going to be something that will be horrifically clipped out of context by somebody somewhere. <laughs> now that I've said that, it's definitely going to happen. But Fingers the, on the clip trigger, the, everybody. The, 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 the fact of the matter <laughs> is, is that, you know, pride is about celebrating identity. And for many people, kink is an inherently linked part to their sexual identity and people start discovering kink. I, and I don't, I personally, in my, in my channel, in my work, I don't advocate for people to start doing kink when they're, younger because uh the, you know there's a bunch of issues with that in terms of like if something does go wrong can you drive your partner to an er to get them checked out do you have your own health care is a doctor going to call your parents on you is that going to cause you like problems with your well-being and ability to maintain being in a safe home environment like there's there's tons of issues with like kids doing kink but fact of the matter is they're going to experiment and they're going to do stuff with their peers anyways and kids that are, and by kids, I mean teenagers, like people that are, you know, 16, 17, mm -hmm. they kind of know, and I've probably kind of known for a while, a lot, a lot of us kind of understood we had kinky, kinky inclinations, you know, before we were actually fully yep. adults. And I, That's and true. I know this every single week, I get questions from people that, are, that feel because of the way they were raised, the environment they were, they feel deeply ashamed and guilty of their interests because they've been told their entire life that it's if you want to hurt anybody if you want to be hurt yourself you're mentally ill you are wrong you are a danger to society you're a wife beater as opposed to thinking about it from a consent framework of of, of it it's just any kind of harm to any kind of human being even having an inkling of a desire to do it with a consenting partner makes you evil and that takes years to unwind and it does lots of damage to people and so i think having just average you know non-sexual expression at pride is one possible way that people could be exposed to that in an age-appropriate way you know under the guidance of their parents they're being accompanied uh you know with a parent to pride to be able to maybe help them when they're teenagers and young adults to not have a moral crisis about who they are as people because of their interests in certain non-conventional activities. 
Yeah, just to uh, <clears throat> um, piggyback off of that, like in uh, in w- Sam and I are in Ontario, Canada, mm. and we had a uh, sort of a change in the sex education curriculum recently, where it would start teaching about consent at like mm. a very young age, at like grade one, I think. Mm. They would start teaching children about consent, which I think is so good that's awesome yeah yeah kids absolutely. should learn about consent like the more you can teach kids about consent and like that idea the more people you will actually protect from you know like child sexual assault who will actually know what's going on and be able to speak about it like that's a, a really good thing but unfortunately we had a conservative government uh in our province who dialed that back to uh, grade five, I believe talking about sex at all or consent in general. Uh, oh, I think, I think they got rid of, cause we, it was uh, consent and also like talking about like sexting and stuff and like internet oh. stuff, which right. um, I believe yeah. brought like, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if, if for anyone who's like, you know, not uh, Canadian, if you know, if you ever heard of Rob Ford, the like crack smoking mayor of Toronto, he has a brother who is, um, a massive piece of shit and is uh, just uh, just destroying our province right now. Yeah, oh, he he fucking sucks. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, no, it is. Uh, it's it's interesting. I think you know, I, consent is is extremely uh, important, and and people should should learn about that concept from a young age. I think that's one of the uh, yeah. you know absolutely central. Yeah, point. if we can get some uh, fuck Doug Fords in the chat, that uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a couple. <laughs> There's a, there's a couple going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not right. Doug Ford. Absolutely. All right. Any, any remaining takes about, about this particular should, beautiful. Should we go, tweet? should we go through the Vosh thread here? What was the first, yeah. what did the first one so, say? Um, the first yeah. one says, and I'll just read it out loud. Cause I, I realize there's probably uh, some visually impaired people viewing. So I, I will, I will oh, yeah, read yeah. it as well. Uh, kink at pride makes people uncomfortable and makes the event less accessible when accessibility should be a priority. Keep less family-friendly stuff to the many, many after parties and adjacent private venues every Pride has. The fact that this is controversial is insane to me. By the way, as a person that's supposedly concerned with accessibility, uh, Vosh does not close caption his Twitch streams. So, thanks for that, Vosh. Um, uh, I, I just want to say, like, real, real quick, uh, before we move on from that first uh, tweet, I feel like uh, Vosh has had kind of like a, uh, as you know, debate culture would say, like a Mott and Bailey fallacy. Yeah. Uh, where he will say things like, oh, no kink is involved anywhere at Pride, as he does in like this uh, first tweet here. Pr- all of Pride should be accessible to anyone uh, except for like the after parties and the private, you know, you, you go to a club afterwards or whatever. Um, but he sort of retreats later on to saying like, no, no, I'm just saying that there should be like a family friendly event at pride. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. But from this first tweet, you can sort of, I, I, I mean, I would read this as saying no kink allowed anywhere in public. Uh, only keep that to the privacy of whatever after parties, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really the impression I got. And it's so funny because when you watch him like have streamed in the days after this, like he very much walks this back to like, oh, well, I didn't mean people that just wear leather. I mean people that yeah. are like trying to fuck in front of kids. Well, it's like, I don't know in what world people can construe this to mean only very specific mm. activities related to sexuality and kink and not people that do X, Y, Z thing. Like I know that like Twitter discourse is kind of like toxic in terms of actually yes. being able to make concise points but he wanted a tweet thread there were many opportunities yeah. here to uh yeah let's let's continue uh, on through that yeah enumerate out exactly what you meant by kink and pride but nobody did until they were streaming in which case they they walked it back yeah i would consider it to be a mott and bailey fallacy because he literally started this with everyone who disagrees with me mm-hmm. as a pedophile which is a hell of a fucking yeah. way to start an argument <laughs> yeah oh my god i've been called a pedophile so many times in the last couple I... of days anyway uh let's let's keep going uh yeah um <laughs> evie yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Pride should be a cool, queer friendly blog party. You can attend to meet with organizers and get cute shirts. Right. Everyone should be able to attend. It should be safe and uncontroversial. Dismissing accessibility as, quote, sanitization is a is a really underhanded and disgusting strategy. Do you want me to keep reading or just leave it at that? I mean, we, we went over that one before, but like mm-hmm. worth pointing out, like pride should be uncontroversial. Like that is, I, I don't think, a good way of describing pride. Like, 
for something that started out as like a revolutionary act you like uncontroversial isn't a, an adjective i would like to be associated with pride i don't know what do you think amp it was a riot <laughs> it, yeah. it was a riot it's the most controversial thing you could you could imagine also that comment is controversial my shirt's fucking cute okay i don't need more cute shirts i got a cute <laughs> shirt already <laughs> Listen, uh, Amp has too many cute shirts. We can't uh, be giving him any more. That would reach a, uh, I mean, a certain level of cuteness. Like half of your brand is yeah. like having is like having puns on t-shirts that are kinky. So like, I've, uh, I've, I've that's controversial that. too. Some people don't like puns. No I, puns at Pride. I, I know. They hate and, puns. They hate punishment. Yeah, punishment. I, you've made. Come that. on now. You've made that one a couple of times, but uh. Yeah, so to to con- to continue on with this, uh, if you want something more spicy, there are a billion places for that. After parties, separate areas, pride club events, even s- entire separate organized marches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I am asking for one widely accessible event. People claiming pride always has to be some big antagonistic inaccessible riot are actively fighting yeah, against the normalization the... of queer people by fetishizing the aesthetic of their oppression. You guys are tools of the establishment. All right. LMAO. I have to ask, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't get it. I, I actually, like, I read this tweet a few times. I don't understand what he's talking about. The, uh, uh, you are actively fighting against the normalization of queer people by fetishizing the aesthetic of their oppression. What? First, first off, let's let, let's unpack the fact that there are millions of places to do the kink stuff. There's not, and in fact, there is less and less. Not only because of COVID, mm-hmm. but because of regulations that that force sex clubs out of business yeah. because they're seen as sex trafficking places. Um, so wrong. Uh, but there's no facts <laughs> there to to support his statement, and we have plenty of instances of sex negative legislation that does force closures. Um, but I digress. Yeah, it's uh to. To speak to that point, I think it's interesting when he says stuff like, oh, there's a billion places for that. I know factually in my community, there was an, I, I don't know if, if you remember this at all, Amp, but uh, I think it was at Thunder in the Mountains. There was, no, it was uh, Sin in the City in Las Vegas. Um, like a week before there's this big BDSM convention that happens in Las Vegas, a week before it was supposed to happen after a year of planning, it got rated at the highest level of Nevada state government because essentially someone was butthurt about the convention existing because they want to make Las Vegas a family-friendly place. Las Vegas, a place I mm-hmm. went to when I was 13 years old and there were women on the street forcing cards into my hand with pictures of nude prostitutes on them. But let's make Las Vegas a family-friendly place. <laughs> um, it, it Because they, they basically uh, in, insinuated that they believed prostitution was happening at a consensual BDSM convention and that is not an isolated incident of things like this happening in our community i have seen the opening and closing of several kink venues in the in the first city the college town i lived in where i ever did bdsm there was the one gay bar in town was also the bdsm hub we kind of co-supported each other the kink community went in there on their slow nights and gave them some extra revenue we had our our group meetings there Uh, they were continually raided by police now there was a bar across the street which you could openly find drugs in if you wanted to but they weren't the ones that were raided it was the clean gay bar that was (laughs) So, oh, oh, yeah, and that, that was like, that was 2012. You know, that wasn't that long ago. This wasn't ancient history. This was hmm. very recent. This kind of, you know, police discrimination was happening against not just queer people, but specifically queer kinky people. Hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. I, a lot of this feels like just homophobia. The, yeah. The yeah. concerning, the concern trolling. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, shall we, shall we continue on with this thread? Uh, the, the last point just sure. says... I don't think there's too much else. Yeah, yeah. the last point is just okay. don't say you don't want Pride to evolve unless you're also willing to keep the public acceptance of Pride from evolving, which again, I think that just goes back to the fundamental misunderstanding of the purpose of Pride, which is not like, yeah. let's make yeah. more in Southern, okay? Uh, <laughs> with our displays of sexuality. I don't think that's the point of Pride. I could yeah. could talk about that. Oh, sorry guys, Lauren Southern doesn't like this. Everybody's like, oh, really okay what does she want us to change mm-hmm. what does she need <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, she would really like it if no one was gay or not white. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Warren Southern. Let's once once we once we uh, get like Warren Southern on board, then we're good. We're done. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. The the struggle for equal rights for gay people is over. It, it's mm-hmm. done. Send him home. Okay. Yes. Now we're on shoe. Yeah. 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 Uh, Let's and, do it. and and for for context for people, there's a tweet that is unavailable from the lovely, the amazing Big Joel. Uh, he, 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 uh, yeah. I feel he so... deleted, did he delete his account? Um, is he gone? I, don't think he's... I, I, I saw him post about this. He, he said he's turning off his account for like a week, which is fair. He like, he received because and, he, yeah. shoe on head is a YouTube channel that has what? 1.6 million subscribers and has a diverse fan base. AKA she has a lot of people that have stuck around since when she used to be an anti SJW, which means mm-hmm. that like calling days, anybody yeah. a pedophile is blood in the water. And I, he got, you know, harassed very, very badly. Um, very, so- very cool that a leftist is use uh, a leftist is using QAnon, uh, political strategy here. Just yeah. Accusing yeah. People of being, um, uh, it's also, I mean, we've talked a little bit about this before um, on, on other streams, but just I, I'm always sus of like people when it's like, oh yeah, you like um uh you still like um uh hate like um uh, SJWs, but now you hate neoliberals, and like you're just talking about like the same shit, but you just say neoliberal huh. instead. Yeah, maybe. Which like you know, we're no, we're not <laughs> against like talking on blue check libs, but. <laughs> yeah. All I... all she does is uh, go against libs, which I also do, but like. I, Sometimes you gotta go after conservatives too, right? I just I feel like anytime you base your identity off of hatred for another group, whether that be gay people or like id poll or uh, liberals, you're probably gonna end up having a bad time at some point. So it's probably best to like base yourself off of positive positions instead of like I hate this group and my positions yeah. are whatever this group doesn't like. Um, but for, for context for people that didn't see this tweet from, from Big Joel, essentially what he said was, I don't think it's a moral crisis if a girl sees a guy in a, in a puppy mask at a, at a pride parade. That doesn't seem like a, like something that need that needs to have the level of concern that it seems to be being met out with. And, uh, mm-hmm. um, and, and that somehow resulted in, in this tweet from Shu, which I'll read out, which says, I'm dying on the hill that children should not be anywhere near adult themed shit, whether that be drag shows or kink. And if the Overton window has shifted so far that I'm a reactionary for this take, then so be it. Uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, d- talking about drag shows as adult themed shit. I know we've gone over that before. Um, did you want to speak more to that amp? Oh, I just want to see any one of them try to tell the drag community they can't be a pride. I would love to see yeah. that. I would, I would, I would love yeah. to see the drag yeah, queen's actually. perspectives on this argument. No, yeah, pride man. would suck without drag queens. What would it even be? I, I, I'm, I definitely, I'm not part of like drag queen Twitter at all. I actually, I haven't seen any drag queen voices respond to this, and I, and I hope. Uh, that they are blissfully unaware of this segment of the internet deciding that they're dangerous because uh, they get enough shit as, as it is from people like uh, Blair White. So I hope they're they're not seeing it. But I feel like implying that drag shows are uh, in and of themselves an adult themed sh- adult themed shit is uh, perhaps misunderstanding uh, the entirety of what drag can be. Just like ridiculous, it's like these mm-hmm. the same sort of shit you see with like uh, drag queen, uh, like book story reading hour? things. They do it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, story time, yeah, yeah, story yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah. They do it like uh, libraries for children to go and see like drag queens who are dressed up in like a very fun, you know, like uh, fabulous like way that like children can be like, oh shit, look at all those diamonds or whatever. Like look at all those feathers. Like, and kids love the- that shit. The only thing that becomes aggressive or inappropriate or scary is when people try to bombard the the drag queen story hours and yelling at them how they're inappropriate for kids, which then causes actual trauma and harm for the families that are there. Mm -hmm. Yep. When drag queens are literally just reading stories in a costume. Yeah. I like, I I remember being a kid and like my kindergarten teacher, I remember is, is, you know, 1999 or whatever. She had bright blue eyeshadow she wore every day. That was the coolest shit ever when I was five years old. I was like, oh my gosh, 
bright blue <laughs> eyeshadow. I would have loved to have a drag queen story hour because it's, you know, kids don't have this lens of interpretation that adults have. So I think a lot of this comes down to adults perceiving harm happening to children that like isn't happening to children because they don't have the mental context of oh this is somebody actually acting secretly sexually kids don't even think about that that's not even that's not no. even possibly on their radar of a, like a thing that could be happening they um, literally don't know about sex at that age yeah so it's it's just like it's fun dress up you know it looks like you know drag queen costumes look like half the things that like little girls have in uh, you know, in their play boxes at home, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, adults yeah. dress up like the same way I do!" Like they don't, they don't have any concept of that being. Now, of course, there are certain drag shows, of course, that would be inappropriate for children. But to again, it goes back to this, this painting with this broad brush about all kink cut pride. No drag shows around kids. No, no drag around kids. It's like, well, obviously, you've you set up a terrible argument for yourself here because yeah. there are instances where obviously that's not going to be harmful to kids. And in fact, I would argue there, sh there should be drag at pride. There should be diverse gender expression at pride because, you know, there are tons of, there are tons of people I know in my life that didn't realize they were trans until they were in their like late twenties and puberty had long since passed them by because they, they didn't have that representation. When they were younger to see themselves as being able to have an option besides like the the body and gender presentation that they were told was the only way that they could be when they were you know six years old or whatever um so i think having more diverse representations of what masculinity can be or what your body can look like or how you could dress yourself or a gender expression anything like that i think more of that is good and if the spirit of pride is again is about representing identity and celebrating who you are drag should obviously be a part of that. And I, I cannot see a logical argument for saying drag shouldn't be at Pride. Also, sorry, yeah. one, one last note. I know I'm rambling here. I don't want to talk over anybody too much. But um, uh, I, I don't know about other Pride events, but for our, our kink community, there's a there's a event called Folsom. There are several of them. Uh, and that's like Kinky Pride, the one that happens in San Francisco is in September. I think there's two events this year. One of them, I think, is in September and one's in one's in july but one of the key cornerstones of that is a group called the sisters of perpetual indulgence and every year <laughs> they you use their their group to fundraise for aids like they that they i think i think i read on wikipedia or their website that like i think on average they raise about three hundred thousand dollars which is like uh at I mean, least yeah at least it's probably more than that um but certainly I don't think we would want to stop that kind of fundraising because we're scared of the children uh, seeing somebody in a sequined a gown and a feather boa. <laughs> like, like, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, this is definitely, you know, not a great, specifically the drag shows uh, thing, you know, like that's, seems to me comes comes off to me as just like a purely ignorant um take yeah, here absolutely. uh do we have anything else with uh with shoe that we would want to discuss um you know i think i think shoes really or kind anything kind of she kind of dropped the bomb and then left the discourse essentially i could bring up the tweet that uh sarah zed made about shoe oh yes 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 please that. yeah because that was really interesting fellow, um if, if you're somebody who's concerned sarah. about children yes. seeing anything to do with kink or drag like obviously a pretty low threshold for what's considered a kink uh i thought yeah sarah zed's um point here was uh uh, yeah. Now the YouTuber whose yeah. name comes from a meme about um, harassing cam girls and used to regularly make home horny BDSM tweets and post selfies and BDSM gear on a platform with minors is going to preach to us about gay men wearing BDSM gear at an event with, that a minor could conceivably go to. Yeah. The, the thing about the, her name being about, uh, uh, assaulting cam girls or harassing cam girls rather, um, is like, I guess it, it's like, it was like a 4chan thing back in the day, right? Like, it, oh, if you're real, like put put your shoe on your head and post a picture of you mm. with your shoe on your head. Uh, so yeah, that's what that is about. Yeah. Um, why are you only this outraged at people discussing and dressing in ways that imply horny BDSM shit in public spaces where minors could conceivably run into them and it's gay men in gay spaces doing it, especially when it was your entire brand for years to do this? 
Interesting. Yeah. What is that all about? Uh, oh, you're, this this if, sweet's so good. So good. Uh, if you're fine doing one, but the other makes you, and I quote, useful idiots for pedophiles, you might just have some preconceived hangups about gay men. Also, at least the person on the right is wearing gear that actually fits. <laughs> just a savage, just a savage burn at the end there. So this is this issue for context. This is from April 2016. So this was several years ago now. As far as I know, because she, again, she dropped the bomb and then walked away. I don't know if she responded to this. Has any sort of follow up to this? I think she's kind of just left the the discourse alone um from from she has been uh she hasn't like really uh responded to anyone she's just been like cherry picking the most damning out of context tweets that she can find and uh mm. posting those yeah mm. or uh you know i think i think uh she was in the stream with demon mama and vosh just antagonizing demon mama the entire time knowing that demon mama wasn't supposed to reply to her which was like oh geez June, what do you Wait, mean? what do you mean she wasn't supposed to reply to it? Um, Did they have an agreement? Um, it was in the sense that, um, so Demon Mom was there to debate Vosh, and I believe Vosh has a rule that you're like, if you're there to debate him, you're not allowed to like also bring in like another streamer that's in the chat and then fight them oh. at the same time that you're like debating okay, him. Okay. So like Demon Mama made like a like a just one quick retort to her and then kind of left it at that, but that seems to mostly be Shu's involvement at uh, at present. Right. Yeah um yeah i mean i don't know like her her color seems to be like maybe a bit loose probably like amazon purchase or something uh, it, it's not like i don't know it doesn't seem to be like it'd be painful or something like that but um yeah no it, that that is like displaying kink i i and i guess does she, oh, does like, she yeah. have like more a younger audience is that fair to say about her um i i don't or at least maybe back then i i don't know it's I, like i don't know what her youtube analytics yeah, are. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's, it's always <laughs> hard to say um even in that case you know everyone that has a youtube channel clicks yeah i'm 18 plus and they make a google account so it's not like that's really accurate anyways True. um my understanding because mm -hmm. i mean she's been on the internet for a long time now like when like who is the demographic that watches pretty girls making anti sjw content 15 year old mm. boys like you True. know um <laughs> it's it's not something that generally appeals to an older adult audience and not to say nobody was watching it that was that was older i just find it um you know personally you know i'm wearing a collar right now i don't i don't find it troublesome on its face to wear a collar like that um the one thing i do take issue with though that True. is a specific pet peeve of mine is i really don't like it when my fellow kinky people uh use vanilla hashtags to talk about their kink <laughs> Um, oh, true. Yeah. I, I yeah. repeatedly tell people, like, if it's Mother's Day or Father's Day or it's <laughs> National Pet Day, I guess, um, maybe don't use that as a way to force your, like, CGL or DDLG kink onto an unsuspecting audience. Like, that's very purposely, like, you know vanilla people are looking in that tag. That's not a happy, like, kinky National Pet Day. Like, I think there's ways to have tags like that, that you are, you know, you're celebrating your, your relationship with your daddy or your mommy on those holidays, but not in a way where you're like, I'm I'm gonna make sure yeah. a bunch of vanilla people not know about my kink relationship and then five years later i'm gonna complain that gay people and other exist at pride like it, it's just yeah yeah yeah, it's, it, yeah. bell delphine should be using a different hashtag on father's day for her stuff yeah yeah that's my that's my specific pet, <laughs> pet peeve with that. also but, yeah. this wasn't shooting on that posted that to be fair that was i guess her boy uh, uh, friend who posted yeah, it. Yeah, there's another. There's a, so this is directly from oh, her did, Twitter said? account. Uh, it takes a long time yeah. to like. It took me a while to understand what's happening in this photo. So what is happening in this photo is Shu is on a leash, sitting on the floor underneath Wait, his desk, what? and she is, she is Wait, taking what? a photo of her looking up at him while she's sitting on the ground next to his desk. And I know because I've taken pictures like that. That is the <laughs> angle that that, that that's is. That's true. See, this is from the floor, yeah. And that, that Where, that's is there the leech? Account. Oh, that's what that pink thing is. That's yeah. a leash going towards the oh. Cuz I did not understand what this was when I saw this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you for the explanation. Terrible composition. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. This is ugh. very, very flattering uh to to him. But yeah. <laughs> so she also was posting about it directly on <laughs> 
on her platform, which again, on principle, I don't have a problem with, but she does have a young audience. And again, if we're going to make the argument that exposing minors to kink in any form is inherently problematic and it bad for optics, uh, maybe either address your previous tweets and apologize to them, admit what you did was wrong, or admit that you're currently being a hypocrite or just something. Just don't ignore that these mm-hmm. things happen. That's the only thing I really have a problem with. <laughs> And so, yeah, this one says, LMFAO, you have clearly never watched a single video of ours together. Holy shit. We're in a full-time BDSM relationship based on dynamic, not some vanilla bedroom-only thing. I worship his dick 24-7. But thanks for providing us with material for our next salty beta video. Oh, man, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so... And even if we're not going off of this is from November 2017, even we're, if we're not going off of behavior of these people from years ago, you know, currently, I think the standard of Twitter or of Twitter and also Twitch discourse, YouTube videos like these people repeatedly and constantly make jokes about cuckolding, big mommy milkers, uh, yeah, milfs getting fucked in the ass. Like you, you name a kinky sex act and like people talk about this on stream while also knowing they have a minor audience because they have people mm. that are in their chat. Like I just got home from school. I'm, you know, God, I got to watch this before I started doing my homework. And it's like, so you can't expose children to sexual acts, but when a 13-year-old is in your chat watching you salivate over the latest Resident Evil character, that's okay? But it's okay because it's heterosexual, right? I think that's the that's the vibe. Yeah. Her name is yeah. Dommy Mommy, and how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. This is like a pretty cringy tweet, but also like, I don't know. It's, it's not that bad on its own. It's just, it, it is then, sort oh, of like yeah, a pretty hip, uh, hypocritical to be complaining yeah. about, you know, gay people wearing leather and then posting shit. That's actually explicitly se- sexual to your. Like much more game. so than I think like a lot of like, Oh what yeah. She's like complaining about like, this like, is, yeah. If 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 I had a choice, I was like, "Do you want this kid to be exposed to drag queens or this tweet by Shu?" I would immediately choose drag queens. Like, my God, like, yeah, yeah not, not even close. Um, yeah, no, it, it's it's bad. It's bad stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I don't really have any other strong opinions about this tweet. I think we all agree in the chat. This is just kind of cringe. And that uh, it, yeah. it just demonstrates the, some degree of hypocrisy uh, over over uh, uh, what I, I believe Dima Mama referred to this as a, a moral panic, uh, a moral yeah. panic, which uh, if real, they are contributing to with their own behavior. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and- yeah, uh, yeah, totally. I just shoo used to follow me on Twitter. How did you go oh, yeah, there, so there's, wrong? There's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened? And you, I noticed I don't know, uh, you don't follow don't her for either. How long? Hmm. Uh, what was that? What? Um. Yeah. Well, I don't what? know what I don't know what happens. Uh, no, no, you. I think. Uh. Oh, can you guys not hear me? Is something something happened with my mic. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we can. Hear James, um, can you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you guys? Yeah, um, I think we're on. Yeah, yeah. Point. I don't know what happened there. Okay, weirdness. Okay, uh, I mean, we're like three hours into a stream, so that's some technological. Yeah, no, that is bound that to happen. Happens. Um, in terms of discourse, uh, in and and takes, uh, what other takes do we want to look at? I think there's one, um, that's from Xavier Online. Um, I remember that one. I I blocked him at the oh, very beginning this. of this i am willing to unblock oh, okay. him uh to because i was Wait, like oh, uh, i mean uh Xavier <laughs> online don't blow this okay i don't know even how to like get to his like page i'm really bad at spelling uh not xander hall who who am i trying xander hall rules um oh wait no Z- sorry i was thinking about somebody different. no no yeah <laughs> well, he does not but, but, uh, xander uh, would, would, somebody, yeah, I was thinking of <laughs> would somebody in the chat like be willing to link to like xavier's online's like a uh, twitter account so i can get oh, to I it directly or if somebody it. else can can get to it um i'm, I'm looking right now I, I don't know how it's how you, how you spell it either 
Things with X's, they just they mess they mess with my brain. Oh, Xavier's online, right? Yeah. Oh, I found it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, okay. I don't know this person. They were like one of the first people that made a like a tweet about it, and they were sort of in like in the same discourse bubble as uh, as Shu and Vosh was, but uh, to my knowledge, anyways, a smaller audience. Okay, somebody. Uh, Oh, you guys linked it. Thank you. Let me copy that. Yeah, Sarah, that's great. We love her. Okay. Um, can I uh oh, just un? Yeah, I'll, un I'll unblock. <laughs> wow. So many. God, this. why are there so many Pepe memes? Um. <laughs> no, I hate this. This is my weird. This, this weird. Is weird correlation there. Weird. Uh, I don't. I don't like this tweet. Mavash. <laughs> no. This isn't even funny. I don't get it. Um, what is it? Um, I don't like it's I'm into BDSM. There's like oh. a, there's like a whole meme format oh. which is like oh I'm into Vosh. yeah okay. I'm into BDSM. There's ones that are like you know I yeah I'm into BDSM. You know beautiful dogs surrounding me or like something like that. You know that's yeah. actually cute and funny. It, uh, <laughs> I did see uh I did see one that I thought was really good. It was um mm. step back history. Uh, Tristan uh, was like uh, yeah I'm into BDSM boycott divestment uh, misreal is uh, <laughs> <laughs> misreal. But it, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that's true. BDS, BDSM. Yeah. <laughs> Boycott, divestment, sanctions, misreal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wish I could just like open up different. God, there's so many. Why do you have so many tweets? Got... What so did we many... do wrong on IT? No, oh, Nightbot. What Delru? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Oh, Delru, is anyone else getting janky audio? Are we getting bad audio right now? Oh, is this bad? What's, what's going on? Uh, I don't know if my chat's saying anything. Um, my chat isn't saying anything about uh, 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 things being I'm bad. I'm hoping it's not my internet. It can go oh. bad sometimes. Is it? Uh, it's cutting in and out occasionally, says Delru. Okay, Socktator says audio is good. Uh, yeah, let us know, guys. If, if audio sucks, we can we can do something about it. But um, Delru sounds like a YP, not an MP. It's a your problem, not a my problem. Okay, I think. Uh, yeah, tell him. <laughs> Owned. This is a mean stream. Audio's going to my end. We'll live. I'm getting robotic sound, but it's far and in between. Okay. <laughs> Delru, okay. if Dan was here, he'd have me back. <laughs> Delru, wow. Sorry, Delru. So, the hard S's are fuzzy. Okay, guys. No more S words. Okay. We just... Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. I think we, we can do that. So the this is the tweet I remember seeing, which is like... I think this is like responding to Vosh's and Enchi's original thing, which is mm. regarding kink at Pride. It's more important that kids feel comfortable at Pride than the kink community. This isn't, quote, excluding the kink community. They're free to attend without fetish gear on. Children and kink do not mix. That's the bottom long line here. This isn't about assimilation, cleaning up Pride for the straights, or, quote, attacking traditions. It's about helping LGBTQ kids feel welcome and safe. Queer identity isn't inherently sexual, and it's important that they understand that. Um, I have no idea mm. what uh, Xavier's or Xavier, whatever his, I don't know what his gender orientation or what his sexual orientation is. Um, either. Either. Any any of those above any of the LGBTs or Qs. Um, not that that really necessarily matters for this, uh, for this discourse. Yeah. But it, it does somewhat contribute in the fact that, like... Um, have have you been to Pride and do you know what it actually is like to go to an event like that? I think is the main question I would have. Yeah, I mean, like, again, like, uh, there's a line, you know, like, the, not, I don't think that, like, the, like, scat fetishes, fetishists should have their own float or whatever. Uh, <laughs> like, I think there's a, there's a line we can, we can make, but any kink like anything any fetish gear like any kind of thing is a pretty huge line to draw especially when you claim you're not talking about cleaning up pride for the straights or attacking traditions when you know leather has been as we've discussed has been a part of, of pride since the beginning 
but also again not not making any clarification or providing terminology of what fetish gear is because fetish gear would rely on getting sexual gratification off of a specific body part or mm-hmm. thing that is dehumanizing that's not what kink is kink is oh, yeah yeah fetish. yeah Amp, do you want to talk talk about that like what's what's the difference between a fetish and a kink mm. so i mean kink as we've talked about is anything that's not vanilla sex pretty much anything that's not normal in that regard whereas fetish is a form of like sexual desire in which you're getting gratification linked to um something that is not normal to a specific degree so someone could be a foot fetishist because they're totally into feet and only into feet and that's the only reason they're interested in someone is their feet like it's it's very dehumanizing in that way uh, and ev if i'm incorrect by all means please jump in but like that's my basic big difference there is like Fetish is very direct, very, very only this thing. I need this thing to get off. Kink yeah. is doing things that is not vanilla sex that you can get off to, but you're not necessarily having sex. So like fetish gear is like, I, I would say that fetish is about sex, whereas kink is about your dynamic, who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Evie, would you? I, Interesting. I, I would say the way that I define it for myself is very, very similar. I, I define kink as a non-normative intimacy practice. So yeah. that 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 could be sensual, that could be sexual, that could be emotional, that could be spiritual, that could be a bunch of things, right? Um, because I think intimacy, to some extent, is like one of the, for at least my experience of kink, is like one of the core components. And fetish would be something that like, you need in, to some extent in order to achieve arousal and or orgasm or thinking about it makes it easier there are some people that are fetishes that are like fetishistically exclusive where they can only ever get off to that one thing and other people are fetishistically inclusive where the fetish makes things way easier but they can theoretically get off to other things as well um and it, it seems yeah. to me that the discourse around kink at pride is that people are defining kink more like it's a fetish instead of like the way that you prefer to have relationships or having a particular like non-normative form of intimacy which is is what it really is and we talked about this earlier in the stream of my frustration is like from a from a sociological from an anthropolo from an anthropological perspective it doesn't make any sense that kinksters are not the ones that are allowed to define what kink means to them and suddenly everybody else gets to make up their own definition and those ones somehow have more more authority um and and that's like the part of this that's that's frustrating to me and i think in terms of like oh well this is an attacking tradition i think you can claim it's an attacking tradition but if you're saying that excluding kink at pride is okay because it, it you know what is fetish gear like like mm-hmm. l- leather like what <laughs> what do you think tom of finland is <laughs> like um you know what do you think well, like marlon brando like what do you, like i i like it, it, is that like if it if you are saying that it is fetish gear because somebody probably does get off to the idea of like a tall, you know, buff man with a good hairy chest wearing big leather motorcycle boots, like for some people that could be a fetish, but it's a problem because like what like a fetish gear could be anything that could be latex, it could be leather. I had a partner um, that had a, a fetish for athletic wear. Like he was really into like sneakers and and like gym clothes and stuff. So I guess you can't huh. wear leggings to to pride because <laughs> that's fetish gear for some people. Mm. I can't have balloons because balloons are also fetishes for some people. Lunars. <laughs> you can't have uh, mm-hmm. uh, you can't have thigh highs because those or, or stockings. Uh, really, any kind of hosiery or leg wear at all is probably better to not have that. Swimwear. I know a lot of people are really yep. into swimwear as a kink. So it's if it's a hot day and your pride parade has uh you know some some kind of like um um like and i'm trying to think of like a public fountain kind of thing you can go to to cool off can't wear a swimsuit for that um so like i think people have a very narrow understanding (laughs) of what fetish gear is and what kink means and then apply that to everything and then just don't listen to kink people when they try to explain what their lifestyle or what their clothing even is and then just say if you disagree you're a bad person so yeah yeah. let me let me ask you guys so should fetish gear be allowed at pride uh, or or no i still need to know how they define fetish gear but we're not if you're getting sexual gratification and you gotta 
raging hard on in front of children, that's bad. That's yeah. not what we're asking for. That's sure. not what leather people are there pride for. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why they use certain words like fetish versus kink. Either that or they really just don't know the difference and therefore are still not doing the work of educating themselves before trying to make a hot take that mm -hmm. is and comes yeah. across as ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. And it's – um and – uh, I and I think I think we touched on this before, but there's this conflation between wearing an item and actively doing a kink thing, and I think it's possible to simply wear the gear without like actively getting aroused by it or like thinking sexual thoughts while you're wearing it or wearing it because you want to feel sexually. It's just it's 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 like. People don't understand that kink is like a community. They don't understand that we have our own culture. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they perceive everything that happens as like individual people getting their rocks off as opposed to like we have our own culture in which like this is our form mm. of dress. This is like kilts. I've never seen anybody have any discourse about men that wear kilts uh, in this whole conversation, which is really interesting because like kilts to some extent are fetish wear because men wearing kilts, especially like util kilts in the Pacific Northwest and like Vancouver, like that's like the standard mode of dress for like half of all male dominance uh, for very <laughs> practical reasons. Really? Um, Wait, what's it? Sorry, uh, Evie, what's a Utila kilt? Uh, so a Utila kilt is a particular brand of kilt that's very popular um, among kinksters because you get a bunch of extra functionality like pockets and stuff that are that are like designed either huh. alongside the clothing or or with or like as add-ons you can buy. Uh, they're quite expensive as well. Um, really? But it's yeah. It's uh, <laughs> okay. for some for some reason, um, a lot of people in the kink community have adopted kilts as part of their standard kink wear, um, not because they have a fetish for wearing kilts, but I think if you they're if you, useful, they're useful, like they're just useful. <laughs> but I think under their definition, they would perceive that as fetish wear, uh, even mm. if it's just a, a form of clothing. And I think to some point it's also because it's it's transgressive because at least in you know where i live in north america like you don't generally see a lot of guys just waltzing around in in kilts unless you're maybe part of a very specific punk scene uh where maybe wearing kilts is also uh somewhat common i think and not to take take ourselves away from the designer kilts which are lovely yeah. i love the <laughs> utility kilt great lots of kinksters work there i know for a fact but like i think this brings up an interesting topic of like it's easy to make these blanket statements. It's much harder, and no one is doing it, at drawing lines at what they think is appropriate and not appropriate. Mm -hmm. Going through the debate that happened this last week, the second that we started bringing up pictures of guys in leather, then we were like, well, that's okay. That's okay, kink, but that's bad kink. Oh, well, this this is good, but that they're not doing the, the work of drawing that line because they know the second that they do that, they're going to fall into their own trap and their own fallacies. And this is where having that conversation would be helpful, but that's not how Twitter works. That's not how debates with people that aren't part of the kink community work. Like, I would love to see some of the the give us give us one of those uh, S to F charts. Like, give me a grading yeah. out here, people that are trying to make these rules because you're not you can't make blanket statements like that. And even then, you don't have an understanding of the community or of the terminology. So it would still be flawed because you don't have any foot in this race. Yeah. And that's, and I, again, I think my fear is like who gets to define what is acceptable or not. Cause it, it doesn't seem like they're okay with what current dress codes are for pride because they don't like what they're seeing in these images. But then like what other sorts of decisions would they make and like how does that actually get implemented in the future when possibly different people are running the organization or get to enforce that yeah um, and that's why i'm not saying like i need them to do that but i'm just saying if they actually did the work of trying to explain their perspective then it falls apart because they don't have any bearing and they can't make a valid they can't make a valid argument without just making everyone freak out through fear mongering scare tactics and blanket statements mm -hmm. and that's why yeah. these are such bad takes yeah and i just i i wish i knew why there was such a, such a reluctance to learn about this stuff like why like it's almost like people kind of want to be afraid of it and i don't know why that is i don't know yeah. if that's anybody else has gotten that sense but I, the, the perception yeah. i've had is no, that yeah. people mm -hmm. kind of like 
want it to be this fear mongery thing when it doesn't have to be. And I think part of having good sex education and having content like the kind that, you know, Amp and I make is like trying to reduce that stigma because when you know the historical context of this clothing when you have a more robust worldview of what kink can be stuff like this isn't scary to you anymore and you can interact with it in a safer way you can explain it sorry is there like a is there something going over top like it's hard for me to hear oh is there um there shouldn't be i mean oh on the sorry on on the on the watch together there was a, a video playing do we oh, want to watch that? Oh, is there? Oh, I put I put on a video. Sorry, it might have auto played. It, oh, uh, it's not. Me, it did. I don't know me. if it did for anybody else. Oh, okay. sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I some, couldn't wait here. What you just um, uh, said, Evie? Yeah, somebody wanted to to have us react to a, yeah. to a clip. Um, and we can do that. But what I was trying to say is, I I think mm-hmm. there is. I think we're always afraid of what we don't know, right? Like, or at least one of the things we can be afraid of the things we don't know. And I think if there, if there was more desire to learn, people would understand that kink isn't that scary, that it's not always sexual, that it's not always this big dangerous thing for kids to be around so they can interact with it in a safer way and they can explain it to their kids in a better way where they don't have to be so terrified that their kid might accidentally run across it. And I think what's interesting also is like people are saying, oh, we should have, you know, completely separate areas of, you know, adult pride and, and, you know, kid friendly pride. Well, people walking to pride are still going to interact with each other. Can they not walk to pride wearing their outfits? What if kids can visually see like from across the block at a certain angle, like this adult only part? Is that okay? Like how secluded are we expecting kink to be? Like, does it have to literally be in a closed off building, you know, in a different part of the city at a different event to make sure that the kids are 100% never going to see anything like this? Like how much segregation are people expecting? Let's build a separate city just for <laughs> queer people. I, I would love to have a separate a separate BDSM city. That would be the yeah. best vacation destination. Welcome to BDSM City. Here's your whip. Here's your collar. Come on in. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly. Everyone's um, a do we want to watch this uh, this Hans clip from the debate that oh, we yeah. were almost on? That all oh, of yeah. us this somehow avoided on. being in. This could have been all three of us could have been on this. this all, four, all four of us could have been on this. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 good with watching it unless you have anything additional you want to say. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah. Uh cool. I'm uh, I'm just going to uh uh I I'm putting it on here. BDSM Island. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'd also, yeah. while we're getting that set up, I'd love to ask the chat if they have anything in particular that they would like our opinion about in terms of a tweet or a clip take from somebody's stream. I would, I personally would like to see more of that just so there's not mm. so much scrolling through Twitter. If we could get some more links, that might be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to go to some uh, Riley Grace uh, Rashong tweets at some yes, point. Yes, we can. Um, I don't. I. I don't have yeah. her blocked. I don't know if she's blocked me. Uh, so we may have to explore on that one a, a little bit. Okay. okay. Um, right. But I'm, yeah, I yeah. definitely. I, I, I think. I think we're. Yeah. Um. But let's let's yeah, watch this that, video that, that somebody that, That's one. That's one bridge we super don't have to worry about uh, burning. <laughs> yeah, she's already uh, blocked James, and uh, we're we're <laughs> yeah. socialists, so yeah. she she already hates no, us. She already doesn't uh, like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate. Okay. Um. So I yeah. I I am in the watch uh, together. Is that should we all just press play at the same yeah, time yeah. then? Uh, Sam, are you ready with the? Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah this I think it might just have to be like we all press play at the same time. Oh, so right. yeah, let's uh, one, two, and three. Really? This is no, this is terrible. All right, hold on. Quick uh, question: If someone, yeah, yeah, no, if someone is masturbating in front of a three-year-old and the three-year-old has no idea what's going on, is that fine? Um, the fact that you're hesitating not... is terrible. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! Oh Wait. my god! How are you hesitating Wait, are they, with this? Are they seeing it or are they not? Are they actually seeing yes! it? Yes. Oh, then no, you're that's seeing not okay. it. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, so here's the thing. The ruling you just clarify. said was it based on the understanding of the observer? And- really? Yeah. What that, in the that world was, did that I was just That was Riley Grace, right? Um, that was Riley Grace that, that, said, was, Riley, that was talking? That was Riley Grace, yeah. Because, yeah, that's yeah. basically what I got attacked for, for saying and blocked from her for saying her thing. Like, um, yeah, like, uh, that. yeah, I, I don't know. The, the question... Um, Comparing, I don't know, wearing kink at pride to an actual act of sexual assault, I think is pretty disingenuous. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. And again, absolutely. the the moments that I watched of that debate were a lot of yelling over each other. There, mm-hmm. it was it was not properly scoped, mm-hmm. and the people did not seem to understand what they were talking about a lot of the time. That which is not to say that they they don't have good takes, but the 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 takes were founded on really bad bad explanations of mm-hmm. what they think kink pride and 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 apparently masturbating in public. Not the same. Yeah. Not the same thing. Um, and it's, all it's hypotheticals, all hypotheticals with apart. with nothing that actually made, at least in my my opinion, a good argument there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, very much um, so. It actually reminds me, like, for, coming from the stand-up comedy world, it's like that debate tactic makes me think of uh, comics who are like, oh, like, oh, you guys are together? How long have you been dating? And they ask the dude, and the dude's like, oh, 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 oh. and they're like, wow, you're hesitating to answer? Oh, my God. What? This guy doesn't, he's got one foot out the door or whatever, just because they put this guy on the spot. It's like, mm. You didn't actually make a point, you know? You just like this guy's taking yeah, like yeah. seconds to figure out what you're trying to ask him or whatever. Like, oh my god, the fact that you're hesitating right now. Like, I don't know. I just like heard I, that so many times yeah. in I, like fucking cheesy comedy clubs. I just don't it's, understand uh, like how you think you're gonna get an immediate response after somebody's screaming at you. Like yeah. if somebody is initiating it yeah. a point by doing it at like volume that literally peaked my OBS to like maximum red yeah. out of yeah, nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like you're gonna be a little taken aback by that and be like, I need to process what you even just said before I formulate a response because you're literally yelling at me. Yeah. Um, by the way, yeah. good way of having trauma informed discourse. Thanks, Riley. Uh maybe screaming yeah. at your opponents actually isn't the best thing to do when you're trying to perceivably be sensitive to people's needs. Um <laughs> It's and uh, yeah. I believe they left the debate early because they were getting frustrated, and I might be wrong on that, but mm. that's usually not how a debate goes. You don't yell at people and then leave after you've said what you think is correct, mm. even though you still disagree with everyone. Like, yeah, it's uh, yeah, mm. it just makes me feel weird. It just, it's, it's gross feelings about a discussion that wasn't handled well. And, totally. um, um, and speaking, I, I don't know if they're still there. I think at some point Hans was in the chat like a long, long time ago, but to, they, yeah. they wanted our opinion about um, the debate. I found the, the first half before he did his pee break, Riley was dominating the conversation and interrupted absolutely everybody that was speaking constantly, almost without ever being corrected for doing so. Um, and it seemed like the main thing that Riley was there for um, was to just yell at everybody for being uh, <laughs> of different opinion than her. And then, like, I, I can I understand it in the same way that I understand when people legitimately think that, like, abortion is killing a baby. Like, if you legitimately believe that abortion is, like, killing a child, I can see why <laughs> you would scream and act inappropriately because you think it's actually murder. However... That doesn't mean that you get to like have a debate, dominate it, and then act irrationally around everyone around you and expect that to be like productive discourse because you're so emotionally invested in an argument like that. True. Um, so, yeah. so that was that was interesting. I don't know why Riley had that particular reaction. I I know one thing that that Vosh uh, brought up in in one of his streams that I don't have clips, so we can't share it, but. It was brought up to me as part of that clip I showed earlier from my Twitter. Uh, I, mm. I missed it originally, and then after the stream was ended, I, I went back and I, and I caught this part. Um, evidently, um, Vosh had an experience when he uh, was younger that was not at a Pride event, but where um, the person had taken advantage of like his sexual naivete, if I remember correctly, um, basically saying that, like, um, you know, you should be okay with this and kind of like coercing him to potentially be okay with the sexual scenario. And he had kind of seen some of this kink at pride discourse as like trying to convince kids that it's okay to be around certain expressions of sexuality as like a Trojan horse to like sexual contact with children. Um, which again is Ill- is illegal regardless of how you go about doing it. Um, so I think there could be a degree in this discourse of people having um, legitimately very emotional reactions because they have a trauma history that is related to scenarios that their brain is connecting to talking about subjects like this, which is really sad and unfortunate. 
Um, and I hope that people mm -hmm. that are going through that are able to step back from these conversations and take that moment for healing and self care before engaging in, in additional harm by continuing to go through this discourse when they're not in an emotional and mental place to do so in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, absolutely. Do, uh, do we want to go over this uh, mouthy infidel tweet you got up here, Sam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, we've got this one. Uh, this, uh, someone in our chat uh, sent us this. Uh, um, imagine being like a 13-year-old gay kid who wants to go to Pride, but your parents won't let you because some dipshits want to use this opportunity to publicly fuck each other in dog costumes. I mean, I feel like we've already gone over why this <laughs> is like an incorrect uh, take. Yeah, in, yeah. No uh, one yeah. is having public sex in leather dog costumes. Again, this is June. Uh, it's like too hot. To yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> I think no, this no, might no. be a bit more interesting. Uh, the like whole, um, my whole point is that Pride should be for kids. Pride is about accepting and celebrating people of marginalized identity. LGBT uh, uh, kids need that more than anyone. Which, I mean, I feel like... Um, uh, a lot of the people who he's trying to keep out of Pride are much more concerned and much more, like, active in helping and supporting, um, uh, like, queer kids than Melthy Infidel is. Wait, actually, like, looking at The Amazing Atheist, uh, his tweets are actually pretty good, right? Did you, did Amazing you Atheist uh, is sometimes good, sometimes not now. I don't, he's, like, yeah. better, but not <laughs> no, as, I don't remember... Yeah. I haven't checked in on him since like the early like. Oh yeah, he used to be like a full on SJW. piece of shit, and yeah, he's like, like since like started releasing videos, being like, "I've changed some of my opinions. Here's what they are," and like some of them are very good, and then some of them still suck. I mean, uh, like, well, I well mean, what he's saying to like Melty Infidel head, here, right? That's like shoe and head. It's like oh, well, yeah, it used to they be were part of the guys. same. And they're because they're all part yeah. of the whole like original like atheist anti SJW crowd. So of course yeah. they're gonna have some good takes and some bad takes because the anti-SJW reactionary is still just below the surface. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. But uh, his take here, I think, is, like, pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he responds to the first one. Imagine yeah. having to wait until you're old enough to do something because not everything is for kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, yeah. that. yeah. And then Imagine. he, and then you know, the infidel is responding to that. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, uh, a flip of that is, imagine being a young adult telling a uh, someone who lived through the AIDS crisis that they shouldn't be there because they're wearing leather that they literally got from someone and had to help keep alive and went through the cultural, like just war. Like imagine someone mm -hmm. of, of that generation telling someone who lived through all of that, that they can't be there because they are, they don't, they don't matter that their, their culture, their, their, their leather because they're dressed in it. That's inappropriate. And I don't care if you went through that and lost all your friends. You pride is not for you. Yeah, how, for how, real. how tone. Yeah. Sorry. That's just that kind of, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah. I think this goes back to, you know, Oh, it's not trying to ignore tradition or whatever. Like it is like, it is trying to ignore tradition. Mm -hmm, I know mm -hmm. that it is because 80% like, of the people that are on the opposite side of this argument are entirely ignorant of like queer kink history. They just, they simply do not know what happened and assume that essentially kink is entirely heterosexual and therefore it doesn't belong at pride because they like i, I saw that a lot in the debate with uh with riley that hans had like a lot of people mm -hmm. just like made statements like oh well kink and kink and like lgbt issues aren't even really linked together in the first place so i don't see why kink has to be a pride at all and it's like you know what? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to tell you, but it is. And I'm I'm very sorry that we grew up in a in a culture where, like, you have to miss out on that part of your history because people were so terrified of sharing that and having that be how heterosexual people perceived them that they felt like they had to destroy it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that that to me is really, really sad. Now, what I would like to talk about is um, with, with this take, I think there's a lot of debate over, like, who who is is pride for because it seems like people are making this argument where you do have to choose between oh first of all i would say if a, if a parent is not going to let you go to pride it's probably not because they they saw on twitter that somebody was wearing a dog costume yeah. it's probably <laughs> because they're homophobic like dog <laughs> costumes yeah, yeah. okay now we're definitely not going yeah because they were totally cool with it before and that was yeah. that was <laughs> simply the last year i would say that that's probably 
unlikely, but I, I, I don't think it's an either or that it has to be either you let the, the, the teenager gay kid go or you let, you know, the other man that survived the AIDS crisis go. That's why this argument always, always boils down to when people are confronted about it. Oh, let's have separate adults and kink spaces at Pride, which at least as far as I've been going to them and the places I've gone to them in has been a thing. That's, that's, that's already how it's operating. Unless something is radically mm-hmm. different in a yeah, different part of no, the country no. I'm not aware of. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do, uh, do we want to go over some of Riley's uh, tweets? Mm. Uh, yeah, we can, we can do that. I don't know. Uh, There's less screaming yeah, how tweets, mu- how I much, imagine. Uh, it's a lot of, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like, like one thing I find like really annoying with her is how much it's like... Um, I don't know. It, it feels like she's like, like doing the thing of like, so now I've been canceled for doing this, this, this. And it's like, just like trying to like, like you haven't been exact. I, I wouldn't call this canceled. Just people don't like you because you say dumb and bad things. <laughs> yeah. Like I think if I remember, I haven't kept up with Riley. If I remember correctly, it was something to the effect of like, they decided socialism was bad because they heard the phrase, eat the rich, not understanding the context of yeah. that phrase. That was one of her um, things, which yeah. is not, which is not literally committing cannibalism. Um, but okay, well, no, well, I mean, that take people, was like, I'm a vegetarian, so <laughs> that take was them being like, oh well, what if you? Okay, let's say you do socialism, but the um, the like uh, landlords and the capitalists refuse to give up control of their businesses. What happens then? And you can't answer that without saying violence should happen to them. That means that you're advocating violence, and it's like, what happens if? Someone says that they believe taxation is theft and they will never pay any taxes. Some form of violence will happen to them at some point down the line because that's how politics, that's how political power it works. They're saying that what if like, you know, we change the law and someone refuses to follow a new law then you're stalling. Like it, it, it was, it was a very I mean, bad line of we, argument. We all live in settler colonial uh, states, which are continuous mm-hmm. violence against the colonized. Like yeah, the current like, system yeah. is violence. Yeah. It, While I don't know many of these people well, um, and only know them from the pride discourse, mm-hmm. I think it's telling the fact that a lot of the, the bad takes get ignored or try to be backpedaled or deleted um, and we don't hold people accountable for their opinions that are wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm fully of the mindset of like, people can change. People should be allowed the, the room to grow mm-hmm. and learn and do better. But from what I've seen from a lot of the discourse and, and the receipts that people keep bringing up about some of these people pointing fingers and, and trying to make these blanket statements is that this is a common occurrence and a pattern that they do. Why do we not hold them accountable for, for bad takes? And why don't we have more discussions around that? It's 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 so much shouting online. It should be more educating and having conversations. But as we've learned, some of these people are not capable of that because they don't actually listen. They're not open to having that conversation. They're right. You're wrong. Shut up. Like that's not it. That's that. That's not how you do this. Yeah, I would. I would love to see a scenario in which it is legitimately okay for like a a big political streamer to actually legitimately have a changed position. Cause I can't think of any of them that have been like, actually I've changed my mind on this. And I, I don't know if that's like a Twitch culture thing or a streamer thing or a just people that, you know, anoint themselves as debate overlords decide that all of their opinions are correct and then work their way out from there. Um, but I think, I think that this should be an opportunity for education because if we are legitimately interested in like what is best for the queer community, that's going to involve a difference of, of, of opinion and ultimately probably coming to a different position than whatever your original reaction was. Um, do people yeah. have a, a link? Okay. You, you have the, oh, you I just, have I just threw up one. Up. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is a, um, I'll, I'll just read this out, but, um, uh, a- anyone who thinks that, uh, oh, so someone's saying, uh, replying to her, uh, stop rationalizing, you're a conservative. I'm not sure if that was a response to, but I mean, I'm guessing just them being shitty. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, unironically, the only, uh, care about the well being of children, while apparently also ignoring that that's, uh, the whole trans youth discourse was about. Um, 
Okay. So yeah, that's uh, the uh, the Simpsons quote from uh, what's her name, Helen Lovejoy. Yeah, yeah. Won't somebody please yeah, think yeah. of the children? Which is like an extremely reactionary, like you know, response to a lot of things. And and as we I think appropriate, there are actual studies that show thinking of the children leads to bad censorship and more harm. Mm-hmm. Which wasn't yeah. a, no one's brought this up, and of course, I don't think Riley has read such things, but this exists on the internet. There's a book which I actually did find. Yeah, um, what's that book called? called? It's called Not yeah. in Front of My Children, which gives a lovely oh. perspective on how censorship and how thinking of the children is a bad thing. Awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, I that makes um, sense. I'm curious to read the uh, study behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I thought this was an interesting uh, thing, just the whole, uh, anyone who thinks of taking the position of... Uh, Exposing children to kink may cause them harm. Makes me a conservative. Has absolutely no uh, real understanding of IRL politics. Um, I know we sort of talked about this before with the whole like um, touch grass stuff, but it, it like it is um, mm-hmm. it is such an interesting thing to like defend your like reactionary position by being like lots of people agree with this. Like that's not evidence that your case is right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. There's a, uh, apparently, uh, Riley has a pinned tweet we should watch. Oh, okay. Oh, is this? This just seems like this I don't know. Tweet... She's, she blocked me for, uh, yesterday, so I don't know. This what, tweet what seems got. like the same thing that Shuan Head was saying about, like, if this take makes me a conservative or this take makes me a reactionary, then so be it. And it's like, um... Maybe okay. you should implore about why that is. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you've accepted the explanation of the argument. Let's do it. Oh yeah, do you want to throw um, that? This is it's in the watch together. I'm hoping yeah. this might work this time. <gasps> we'll have we'll have to see. All right. Uh, no, never mind. Okay, uh, I should be able. Connect. I I'll should be able to watch if we do uh, one, two, three. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to get back to uh, this. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I think we have like if we have like ten minutes left. I think after this, uh, just just FYI, if you didn't check the Discord. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm definitely definitely yeah, fading sure. a little bit. But yeah, let's. Uh, uh, if you want to do like a Q and A after we watch this. I'm yeah, there. I think that makes sense. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just, I'm just queuing it up. Uh, one second. All right. Uh, yeah. On three, uh, one, two, three. Say it Let's again. Go. I'll say it as much as I need to. If you are doing something to satisfy a sexual desire, you're doing a sexual act. If you do it around or involving other people, you are involving them in a sex act. If you're not doing it in order to involve other people in a sex act, then it's fine. Sometimes we need to be able to make determinations about who is and who is not engaging in a sex act. We cannot read people's minds, so we need to be able to go based on the totality of the circumstances. Certain things are going to be easier to understand that they're clearly engaging in sexual acts than others. If you're wearing cat ears and a tail, you're probably fine if you say that you're not. But like, if you wear cat ears and a tail and you start moaning and you say, I'm engaging in a sexual act, then I would say that you need to be away from <laughs> children or you need to be only around people who are able to give consent and who are giving consent. Like, that's the take. If you want, you can clip. Say it again. I tell right after that, it's like, if you want, you can clip this. And then it immediately got clipped. But she clipped it herself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah. I like the idea that she's like, if you're like getting off and you're moaning and you're saying, I'm being sexually attracted to this, it's like, I don't think people really say that when they're t- turned on. Like, oh, God. I am sexually I'm considering attracted this is sex this. right now. To me, this is sexual. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, talk dirty to me. I am sexually turned on right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> I okay, consider what dirty. we're doing yeah. to be sex. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, but like, also, like, um, th- well, what's that? What's that fallacy called? The um, uh, moat and whatever, oh, Martin uh, Bailey. Like, th- Martin Bailey. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is so that. Like, this is not. Yes, no one is debating that. Someone who is, like, literally in the process of getting off is, like, should be in doing that in front of kids. Obviously not. But it's, like, yeah, that, that, that's, not, that's not what she's been arguing this whole time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's one thing to say, like, 
well, I don't think people should be having sex in front of children. Yeah. Oh, everyone agrees with that. There's, there's no one mm. like that is a complete straw man. But like to ch- keep retreating to that when your actual point is no one should be allowed to wear any kind of like kink gear anywhere near a child, like, you know, at pride, like mm-hmm. that's a different take. I will say though that um, this is growth from the previous debate that was had. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there is discussion of distorted thinking and being conscious of the fact that distorted thinking was a part of the arguments originally. I, I would give credit to the fact that they're realizing that this is a complicated issue, but it's still very much a, a, a very conflicted bad take because it's still using emotion and their own personal prejudice against this this culture that they don't understand. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I think I I would agree. It's, it's certainly a much calmer delivery than during the debate, and I think that allowed for some time for reflection over uh, impulse reaction, and I think that's good. But I think it comes down to the thing. I think uh, at least that Riley is getting at here that I believe was also said during the debate itself was that like this reasonable person standard of like if a reasonable person can look at that and like understand that it could be sexual it should therefore not be allowed in front of children um which is interesting to me because if our primary concern is children being exploited sexually typically the predators that are going to be doing that already attempt to do so in a way which goes incognito around mainstream society they don't publicly advertise i'm a predator look at me doing a predator thing and so i think if your concern is actually preventing harm from children generally the people that are doing it aren't advertising it quite so forcefully as riley seems to imagine is a like can be viewed like by by an average person on the street which i think is possibly a downfall of this argument is um yeah uh, but then again again where is the news story? Where is the problem this is coming from that is causing all this distress that people think, uh, you know, kink at pride is allowing pedophiles to sneak in and like harm queer kids? Like where it, it, has that happened? Is it is just a suspector mm. we're afraid of happening that that could happen? Is that actually reasonable? And so, God, yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a much uh, better said take than i think what happened during the debate but i also don't know how accurately it points to any real issues that are worth being concerned over in the way that mm-hmm. riley describes them absolutely i agree on that um and yeah. again it's very much like a a non-point because they don't know how to do the thing that they want to do and they turn to a, another blanket statement of a normal person or the average person mm-hmm. which again not we're not trying to appease the normal people by being at pride and doing a pride, you know, that, that, that is exactly what pride is against is being normal and, and (laughs) bending to the whims of what people want us to be and act and be a good queer person that doesn't overly sexualize themselves. That's, that's just not reasonable or what the event's about. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I know, I know you have to go. So I, I will just say really quickly, um, for me, I'm available for another like 15 minutes. If we want to do like a quick Q and a, there's one point that's related to this that we haven't quite gotten to yet that I'd like to discuss. Cause it was something that I saw come up a lot in the chat around this debate. That was something that people in particular were referencing and like the concept of consent and how this plays into, um, a, a conversation about pride. Cause I think at least in the kink community for people, other kinky people that are against kink being at pride, the concept is, well, people can't consent to view other people doing consent. Like people can consent to other people doing kink in public and, and viewing kink in public. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you maybe wanted to speak to that um, quickly and before you have yeah, to Yeah, totally. Oh, I, I, I'm, I, I can, I can be a little flexible and stick around for, okay. for Q and a, um, mm-hmm. but can you please repeat the question one more time? Oh, I was yeah. reading chat. Apologies. <laughs> That's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about the use of consent in this conversation with regards to in particular, other kinky people that are against kink being at pride, uh, making the argument that kink shouldn't be at pride because other people haven't consented to view kink. And that's why it's problematic. Not necessarily a save the children argument, but a more consent-focused argument for why it shouldn't be viewable at Pride. 
Um, we, we touched on it a bit, just being that this event is about sexual liberation, about sexual freedoms. You can't go to the event not expecting to see anything sexual. And the, the kink contingent, who is not acting upon sex, but is just existing in a space wearing gear that they might think that they look cool in, or they might feel sexy in, but they are not having sex, that, that doesn't seem like a consent violation. Because you are at an event that is literally about a riot over sexual freedoms. At least that that's that's my my quick take. Um, it's not a family friendly event in that regard. Mm. Not supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I my understanding of that like like conversation is like it, it's around something like say like exhibitionism or something where it's like or like you know like publicly doing things where it's like someone else like part like part of the like scene or whatever is someone is like the people observing who did not consent to be observers like um there's a guy in toronto i don't think he's done it in the last year uh you know covid and everything is what they've taken from us but he, like being uh uh who would like kept being found tied up in this like park in his underwear and it was like with like you <laughs> know like, so, some like some stuff like written on his chest and it was like people were like there are kids in this park and no no one like no one consented to be a part of whatever like in you're doing here like that's not yeah like, i feel like i but i feel like that's not at all what's happening at like pride or like in the types of like kink events that are being talked about generally here right am i yeah yeah I it goes back to consenting to wedding rings to straight people having affection for each other like we it's not realistic to say that no affection is allowed because it's sexual and that might make, make people uncomfortable mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there was like a bit of a uh, discourse a little while back when there was a person doing pet play i think it was like a dominatrix and somebody mm -hmm. being their pet at like a grocery store mm -hmm. um not during pro not like any kind of like special event it was just a standard grocery store um what would you guys uh, say about that so it's funny you bring that up because that's actually what i was thinking of in terms of a consent conversation because what i saw a lot of people do is there's there's another um i don't think cat black would describe herself as a kink youtuber but she talks a lot about her kink relationship mm -hmm. she's also poly trans black great youtuber love cat black um and a lot of people i saw in, in vosh's chat during the the Hans debate during like so many of these things, I saw a lot of people reference, well, actual kinky person, Cat Black, would be against kink at Pride because of what she says. It's this different video though. About it's a different. Dom. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that's, and, yeah. And, and, Very different. And so, many, and, and so um, for people that aren't familiar with that, essentially what happened is, uh, and this story is actually a little bit, um, more than meets the eye because essentially it was it was somebody that was very young that was a survival sex worker that didn't really know about bdsm that was essentially doming because they needed money to be able to afford food got an offer from a client that wanted to be walked around on a leash in a grocery store and of course if you're a survival sex worker that's working because you literally need money to eat food like or, or to pay for rent like you're you're probably not going to really think too deeply about the larger political ramifications right. of what you're doing necessarily. You're kind of at a point where you're, you're, you don't have, you don't have like the wherewithal to think about these things. So it, this sure. person walks somebody on a leash in a grocery store. It went viral, I think on, on TikTok or, or YouTube or somewhere originally. And it got really shared around. A lot of people had very strong opinions about it. And I don't think anybody that I know is advocating for that to happen. But what is interesting is people don't seem to make a delineation between the performance of kink at a public venue where those sorts of uh, that the sort of activity or that sort of dress is is not expected versus something happening specifically at a pride event like within mm -hmm. the confines of a pride event. Mm -hmm. And and so people are conflating well because uh, you know, professional kinkster that makes YouTube videos is saying this is bad. Therefore, also kink at Pride would be similarly bad, even though the two are different scenarios. But in that very video that we're talking about, because I, I watched it last night because someone was like, you're wrong because Cat Black says that BDSM and kink shouldn't happen in public. Therefore, it shouldn't happen at Pride. We don't talk about the context, of course, in that instance which is pride is different than a, a supermarket. There's there's not a lady on aisle six with her boobs out. Like, that would be inappropriate. 
But in that video, Kat talks about how important leather history is mm. to the dynamic and the conversation. And that this person who was younger and a newer kinkster, while, while surviving, and I totally understand that, doesn't understand the dynamics and the history there probably because they are a newer person in that scene. At the same time, Kat doesn't go to Pride. Like, I'm pretty sure she makes that point in the video that it's just she not does. for her. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm of the mindset that while that topic of, we don't, we don't know what Kat thinks of, of kinksters at pride, but she, it's just not her thing. And I, we should respect that. But like using that video as an instance, I watched it and I was like, well, but Kat doesn't go into detail about pride. You can't use this not relatable topic to make your point just because you're not talking about context. Context is key. Context is important. Context is what makes things relevant and relative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I also watched that cat black video mm -hmm. uh, recently because of this discourse. But yeah, no, she does bring up pride for like a second, but it's only to say that she doesn't, for personally, you know, participate in that. And uh, she's, you know, she brings it up as like, oh, it's a separate issue. I'm not talking about kink at pride. I'm talking about kink at a place where like no one could possibly expect there mm. to be this sort of play. You know, it's, it's not yeah. the same as saying, Oh, cat black said you shouldn't wear, bring your like, so like puppy sub to the grocery store or whatever. Like you can't compare that to like showing up at pride with your kink gear. On. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also there's, there's a scene happening in that instance mm -hmm. when you're at pride marching mm -hmm. in a parade, you're not doing a scene. And and also, uh, no one is marching around on all fours at Pride because that would be literal damage to your body. So, like, you're not getting <laughs> yeah. sexual in that way. But, like, the, yeah. the, the supermarket scene was a scene. She was she was degrading yeah. him. She was humiliating him. It was actual arousal happening. Pro well, I'm not going to say actual arousal. I'm not the guy. Mm -hmm. But, like, there is definitely a lot more arousal happening or at least <laughs> some, are, some are, uh, assumed arousal there because he's paying her for her services. Mm -hmm. No one's getting paid for their services at Pride. It's a fucking parade. They're doing that for, for free because they're paying homage to their history. Um, yeah. And all, all this to say, like, I, I love Kat and I agree with her her perspective on that instance, but she doesn't talk about what she thinks about Pride. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. feels like a, a very bad comparison. Yeah. And, and like, I, I do think that you shouldn't involve, you know, non-consenting uh, strangers, like civilians in your kink, you know, like if you're yeah. like, if you have like a humiliation mm -hmm. kink and you're going up to people yeah. and saying like, oh, I have a small penis. What do you think about that or something? You know, like, yeah, yeah. that is sense. not cool. There, there's still there is a decency that is happening, and they are pretty much going against the rules of what I can assume the supermarket has, which is like you need to be clothed yeah. a certain way. At the yeah. same time, Pride has rules about decency, and the people in the leather contingents are following them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, people exactly. are following yeah, rules yeah. and breaking rules. Those are two different things. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think this problem always ends up going back to um, are are people okay with the way that like Pride organizations currently run their events or not because Vosh walked back to his original statements and was like oh yeah I'm fine with the way that Pride's currently run because thank god it's not run by lefties on Twitter or it would be a shit show she's just like I don't know why that dig was necessary at the end there yeah. um, but it, you know it's, yeah. so it's like okay if we're okay with how Pride is run currently why are we having a theoretical argument over problems that aren't happening and then I, I just I get confused all over again about why why everything is being made out to be a problem to the degree that it is uh and, and as far as cat's video goes i think you guys all really hit the nail on the head so i don't really have too much more to add to that part of the mm. conversation but i i would just say it's very interesting that there is this appeal to authority from one particular youtuber to say well this person agrees with me but only so long as i misrepresent their point and extrapolate from it because uh, what i've seen happen a lot is uh there there is this misconstrual of of consent that happens in this conversation and and i've talked in videos about this before you know i'm not advocating for people to do bdsm in grocery stores or in the middle of a park i've actually unfollowed people um that i would that i respect in the bdsm community that do things uh like rope bondage in broad daylight in the middle of parks um i i don't think that's i don't think that's 
part of my value set is like how I practice kink. Um, I don't, it's on the edge of my comfort zone. Um, I, I don't personally advocate for that. People do it obviously, which is why I had to unfollow people that, that do. Um, I'm not for doing kink in public, but again, like pride has certain codes of conduct. They have standards, they have norms, they have, uh, you know, dress codes. And as long as people are following those things, I don't understand what people are really getting mad over except for how prides where they live are currently being organized or how prides in other parts of the world that they never have to go to are being organized at least. Totally. Um, should we get into uh, some Q and a, do we, do we have anything, uh, yeah, I haven't on deck seen... here? So if, yeah. If anyone uh, has anything, uh, just like at, uh, uh, the goat and the goblin will like, uh, I'll, I'll be easier able to see it, but yeah. Um, uh, Q, let's say you meet someone in kink gear um, of some kind. Is there a good way to ask about them and their expression uh, that uh, shows a genuine wish to learn and doesn't other or objectify them? Good question. Yeah, that's a great question. Sure. Uh, Evie, do you mind if I start? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, I get it day in and day out. I wear this all the time. As you can see, it's like so I usually put it under my shirt, but sometimes it pops up. If someone asks about it, the best way to do it is just like, hey, I really like that 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 collar or that necklace you're wearing. Can you tell me about it? And if I am wanting to have that conversation, if it's the right space, if it's a, an area in like my gay neighborhood that it would be appropriate to talk about like my, my partner, my connection, what it means, if it's kinky, um, it kind of leads the the conversation to allow me to feel comfortable or not to talk about it and you're, you're giving me a compliment so like start with a compliment be polite and then be inquisitive but don't be rude yeah that would be my approach um, and that's pretty much it i can give an example of how not to do it i have had people be very <laughs> so um uh in, in the pre-quarantine times i used to go to a dance studio and at one point, I think somebody that was in the same class level as me had, in, had invited a friend to, like, come with them to come check out the studio. And this this uh, person was a cis man. And they saw that I at the time I was wearing an infinity collar, uh, which is like a, you know, an enclosed kind of metal circlet essentially around your neck. And uh, the, the space that I go to for dance is like, it's very queer, it's very kinky, it's very poly. Like one of my instructors was wearing the exact same kind of collar that I am actually when she teaches classes. And um, he asked me like one time after class, it was like, what's that necklace you're wearing? And like we were in this, uh, like the, the area where you would change like in and out of your like dance shoes, like was kind of in this corner. And like the way he approached me, I was like in the corner when he was, at least he was staring directly at my neck while he said this question. And I was mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't, I, it's just a necklace. I got it from my boyfriend. And like, you could tell he was suspicious. Cause like, I didn't know who this fucking guy was like, it's a kink friendly space and a queer friendly space, but I don't know this guy. And he's kind of approaching me in a creepy way. I'm not going to, Talked to him, he was like, okay. And then the next time we had class together, I think it was later that week, um, he asked me again, and then he was like, I know this time it's a collar, what is that about? And it was, that was the single-handed creepiest yeah. experience I've ever had with somebody trying to ask me about something oh, around my neck. And it felt yeah. very threatening. And he ended up never coming back to class again. Um, but I essentially, huh. told, I essentially told him, I'm like, do not ever ask me that question again. I'm not talking to you about it. And like, he never showed up for class ever again. And like, if it was, if he had approached me in a more respectful way or understood that I wasn't in a location where I felt comfortable talking to him about that, I would have been more amicable to like a conversation about what it was but like he, he didn't give me an opportunity to feel comfortable so i did not engage in that conversation so if you would like to ask people in a in a, in a comfortable way um like if i see somebody out in the wild that i don't know if they're kinky or not but they're wearing something like this maybe and i'm interested in 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 knowing more and see if i, I found another like-minded adult um i'd say oh that's a that's a really pretty necklace where did you get it and, um, you know, something just like, a, you know, a nice compliment, something that's very casual, but doesn't necessarily pressure somebody to give an answer you know, one way or another, you know, don't. And I actually, when I volunteer at my local dungeon, one of the main things they do is I am I'm called a, a social DM, which is like a social dungeon monitor. So I help facilitate people having 
um, hopefully happy, productive conversation. So like if I see a 40 year old guy cornering an 18 year old girl on the other side of the dungeon into a conversation that she looks like she doesn't want to be in, like it's my job to get in there and like break up that conversation and make sure that everyone involved like feels comfortable and feels like they ha have a way out of that conversation. And just to general like facilitate the flow of everything. I mean, you know, I make sure everybody feels welcome and comfortable. And I, I would say like always giving people like physical space, not making them feel crowded. If you're like a really, really tall person who's talking to a really short person, I recommend kind of trying to get down to their eye level, not like crouching, but like if you're in a social space, it has like couches, chairs, something like that. If you can sit next to them instead of, you know, kind of leaning over them that's probably better and I think being aware of like the physical space you're taking up when you're asking intimate questions um I think you know if, if you're like socialized as a man you're not necessarily always going to think about all of that physical behavior but the more that you can be aware of it the more you can um help people feel comfortable answering those questions honestly because if 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 you're you know a masculine person that's like you know a foot taller than me and you're cornering me inside of a grocery store to ask this question it's going to be completely different uh you know than if we're just happening to sit on a couch next to each other at like a kink event um so context and approach is very important fair yeah um do we have any more questions anymore? yeah we have a couple more um yeah okay uh just, just scrolling through uh uh evie you mentioned unfollowing people who do rope uh in public what are your opinions on photo shoots in public dealing with rope work or kink related photo shoots um i personally i have a few boundaries over personally what i will like support with like because I, I am a public figure so i feel like who i follow follow is like can be perceived as an endorsement and so I try not to follow people that I I think might misrepresent like my opinions of what I consider to be acceptable um one other thing I don't do I don't I don't uh, follow people that involve like animals in their play there's a very big trend of like people that do rope bondage also called shibari where they like I, I think actually um Belle Delphine did this where like she she did something with like an octopus in a photo shoot and like i couldn't oh yeah that's a like, dead no, octopus with the like, googly eyes that's like that's i can i can see the appeal maybe but like i i uh, that's that's not part of my wheelhouse for what i consider acceptable so i also unfollow for that i personally um i, I think there is a a degree of public to which you can do things safely so if you're in um, you know, a national forest, for example, I guess that's technically public, but it's, it's rather unlikely that somebody's going to run into you unless a hiker is like way off course. Or if you're in public, but public means like the backyard of your, like your best friend's house, that's probably also okay. Um, I, I, if you are doing something where, uh, there could be members of the general public in the background, that's probably meaning you're doing something actively, uh, it, in a way that's too public that's that's my personal that's my personal line um and i and i know people that like to do things in parks and, and it's like i don't know like here there's like a couple of really big playgrounds i know that there's a nursery that takes their like little toddlers to go for a walk in the afternoon around that park i would be horrified if like 30 toddlers suddenly came upon me and my partner half naked doing rope bondage for a photo shoot um and i think there's a degree to which you can possibly do it in a strictly aesthetic fashion but I, when i was in college i actually used i did modeling for a short time and i did like fetish modeling and um when we would do things in public like we would sometimes go to national parks and we would go near things that had like rivers and, and trees and stuff like that and we always had a spotter to watch to see if anybody was coming close to us. And if somebody was, we would cover up and we would stop doing the photo shoot until they passed by. Um, and I think that's like the acceptable way to do it if you are going to do it that way. Um, but if it's like, I'm just doing it in the public, like you see like fetish videos of people that are like in full latex, ballet heels, uh, you know, wearing a giant like dildo, like walking around in a park. <laughs> and it's like, that's probably not okay. Uh, Cause that's obviously a sexual thing, but that's my own personal boundary. And I understand that people are going to have different boundaries for what they consider acceptable. And there is certainly room for disagreement on that. I always assume that they must have uh, cleared the park beforehand. Uh, that's what helps mm. me uh, continue masturbating to public uh, <laughs> videos. I, I, I would certainly hope that if they were doing something in public, it's like, um, 
simulated like the implication is like oh we're in public and that yeah. makes it naughty and dirty but like the reality is there's no actual other people but i also like i because I, I, I live in seattle and i there's a bunch of rope tops in seattle i know where they're at in those photos i'm like oh there's no like unless you're there at 3 a.m there are people there like there's no way to physically clear that park because it's <laughs> so popular and i know there's a nursery that goes there i know there's like schools that visit there for field trips all the time like it's something where it's so public and i know exactly where it is that i don't know how much you can like unless you're a film production, be able to clear that park to ensure that nobody would see it. And I, and I typically, they tend to be scenarios where it's one person that's doing the rope and one person in the rope. If they're, they have a spotter, somebody to kind of, you know, put the, put the towel up, put the blanket up to make sure nobody's seeing titties in public. They don't want to see. Um, if they're doing that, that, that definitely makes it more acceptable for me, but because they're not offering that disclosure about their ethical practices for doing stuff in public, I'm not going to follow them with a public account. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah. Um, I think I, I is, if does anyone else have any uh questions? If not, I think we're probably gonna uh sign off and um uh yeah, uh give here. Um but uh before we do, does everyone wanna just like uh do like a quick like uh sign off and um uh say who they are and introduce themselves and we've got a lot more uh viewers than normal and yeah. Uh Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to. There's like, I forgot how many millions of tabs I have open. So, well, thanks <laughs> yeah. for thanks for having us on, guys. Yeah, thanks thank so you for coming out. This is great. This has been so amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad we did this. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start then. Uh, my name mm -hmm. is Pupamp, all one word on most social medias: Twitter, Instagram. Uh, but my my YouTube channel and uh, Twitch channel is What's the Safe Word. W-A-T-T-S, the safe word. We do sex education. I play video games while answering questions. And uh, we cover a lot about th this, about kink, about destigmatizing and educating on things that your normal health class won't talk about because pleasure is what? Apparently bad for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that's um, the marvel today. <laughs> sex, sex bad. I think we all learned that. Yes, um, that's the takeaway here, guys. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Evie Lupine. Yeah, it's, that is. Uh, E-V-I-E. Not spelled like the Pokemon. E V I E L U P I N E. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram, which I don't really use that much. Uh, not on TikTok. Not planning on being on TikTok. And Patreon, uh, Twitter for all my hot takes. YouTube for the educational content. That tends to be my main two things. And yeah, uh, that that's basically it. I definitely focus on educational content, uh, reacting to movies, and just having a fun time. Oh yeah, cool. Um, um, yeah. I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Chill Goblin. The, you can follow me here on the Goat and the Goblin, or on uh, Twitter, Chill Goblin, and YouTube, Chill Goblin. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm Sam. I have I run a YouTube channel called We're in Hell, and um, I yeah I talk about like sociology and. Um, uh trash culture shit um i'm making a video about anti-maskers which i got I have to finish filming tonight um and um yeah you Good can luck. check us uh uh yeah <laughs> oh it's good it's gonna be great it's gonna be great it's gonna be done by dawn i am um... <laughs> it's the best time to film this one is quietest I mean, actually, I live on like a very busy street. But um, yeah, no. If, if, if anyone, we've uh, we've gotten a lot of new followers here. Uh, come back. We uh, most we we get this. This stream is a lot of just uh, we get uh, creators who we like on to talk shit and um, make fun of really bad um, stuff. We didn't do as much cringing as we normally do, but uh, yeah, yeah. Normally, we watch some very bad uh conservative and or lib uh takes and uh, just roast them. we didn't watch one conservative rap video this whole that stream. is That's huge so for us. we didn't watch any uh q pilled rapper uh, rap about hillary clinton uh, listen, listen, not even for a second with the with the degree of pedophile <clears throat> discourse that's happened the last four days ben shapiro is going to make a like a horrible like take about this at some point because he has Ugh. nothing else to live for <sighs> I can't wait. Oh yeah, no, I can't sure. wait. Sure. Oh, I do have a Twitch. It's also uh, it's also just Evie Lupine. Oh yeah. Um, I mostly I stream in there um, on Mondays. I'm currently playing uh, Valheim, and uh, yeah. If you also want to follow me on Twitch, I'm on there. Evie Lupine. Super easy to find me. Just search Evie Lupine. That's pretty much it. 
Awesome. Um, yeah, just want to say like thank you guys so much for for showing up. I know that the the discourse has been like very intense over the past few days. Uh, you know, I'm not even queer, and I was feeling uh, like I needed to take a break from Twitter. <laughs> I was feeling attacked. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you so much. I think this was like a really great conversation, and uh, hopefully, this is my you know, cleanser for everyone. <laughs> oh oh hell this is yeah! This is band. This is my Pomeranian. She is nine years ah. old. She just had a teeth cleaning, and she would really like some attention. So. <laughs> Oh. oh hell yeah bring i was feeling left out yes all of the puppies. oh who's that who's this one this is ein um and he's ein? kind of a mascot for our channel because he just sits in the background every time we stream something but yeah. uh he's great oh are they named after ein rand uh short for einstein from cowboy bebop because i used to have a corgi oh. named ein yes Yes. Okay, oh, good, good, good. I'm a big old anime nerd, yeah, so like yeah, yeah. much, better, much better than what I thought. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys again so much yeah. for having us and uh, providing the space yeah. to just have a that's conversation awesome. that wasn't yelling and yes, yes. used yes. fact over fear. Yes, no, mm. we definitely we had facts over feelings today, and that's mm -hmm. uh, I think according to some people, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, facts yeah. don't care about your <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, uh, let's we. Uh, Right into a uh, demon mama. Yep, that sounds appropriate. Yeah. Let's lead right into demon that's mama. Good. Uh, Riley's also streaming. We could, uh, we could. Uh, give, uh, <laughs> oh no! Don't do that. <laughs> that might be cursed. All right. Good luck, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Yeah. Thanks for.